How are you? I'm good. <laughs> Welcome back to the, the Gory Gaze, where we like to slash up and bleed out your favorite horror movies. Well, what have you been up to, Alex? Not much. Actually, just taking the time to relax and enjoy um, from all the craziness from Halloween, you know, enjoying the time between the holidays. Also, trying to just cope with this whole time change thing. Oh my god, I literally was just about to me mention. Fuck up. Yeah, the time change is ruining my life. Before, uh, I mean, maybe when I was younger, the time change thing was like a really big deal. Is that like a thing? Like it, when you were younger, you're like, yeah, you get that hour of extra sleep. And now I yeah. feel like I've been in recovery mode. You know what? I'm 42 years old and I think I was maybe like 30 something when I when I, I found it easier to just remember to fall back and spring forward. So that's what it is. Back when I was young, like you were saying, um, or like you were asking, I used to make it a big deal. Like if it was a big holiday coming up or some type of big explosion. <laughs> Yeah, Sorry. because you, everyone, even now, I was getting text messages from people who are like, oh, remember, you're going to get that extra yeah. hour in and, you know, be arrested. And <clears throat> excuse me, God, my throat is so fucking dry. We're and so yeah. excited. But when we were younger, I don't know if you were ever a club kid, but um, going to the club and it was going to be 2 a.m. and it turned back to 1 a.m. and you got that extra hour, but no alcohol being sold. I was talking to people yesterday in class and they were saying how, oh, they work in a, a bar and how they had customers who stayed purposely later than they should have because mm -hmm. of the hour change and yeah. they're like well actually you have to keep serving this alcohol because of the time change yeah. as you get older you're more excited at the fact that you get an hour extra to sleep i don't and know <laughs> i think it kind of just made things a little bit worse for me yeah it takes about a week it's like um what do you jet lag type yeah oh what a good comparison yeah because yeah. i've already been kind of in like a really fucked up headspace as it yeah. is all week and, and now, like, the that. day's getting shorter, and it's nighttime faster. It's like, what, at 5 o'clock, we're going to walk the dogs in about two hours, and it's, like, super dark outside. Yeah, and I feel like it just gets darker later, and, I mean, I guess we're just explaining the actual definition of daylight savings time for all of you. I don't know. Maybe. It, it can't just be us. No, I you think know, everybody has. There was other little. people that were saying it affected them a little bit. A say in this convo. I think everybody has that. Because we were supposed to get rid of it, too. What do you mean, get rid of it? Well, we were supposed to vote it out. But what out? The time change. We didn't want it no more here in California. So we were supposed to get rid of the whole um, daylight savings and spring forward and back and just keep it at normal time. And if it got dark at whatever time it was, then that's the way California's Wait, the world. so California solely just wanted to do that? I, is it the only state that actually has? <laughs> No, I think, I think it's the all... entire country. I, I mean, the they world. do it because of farmers. It's how it started. But here we go talking about farmers now. But I yeah, just it's... okay. So we're not. <laughs> Welcome to the Gory Games. Yes, yeah, we're going to gonna slash up and bleed out all the all daylight the... savings time and yes. you need. <laughs> That's funny. Um, last week, we talked about urban legend. And we had a lot of fun uh, taking it back to... 1998 for everybody i had fun with that movie i really did too yeah it's just so much dumber than i remembered it i like i said during that last episode it was just a, a different kind of ride yeah. when i was 12 years old a corny you know? corny memorable for me yeah like as a 37 year old it just <laughs> it doesn't hit the same way like we were at a at out of the closet earlier kind of cruising for christmas decorations we're in the christmas yeah. mood by it's, the way it's the season mariah's all over instagram yeah what oh is mariah Mariah's all over instagram. mariah is it's it's time. Time. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um <clears throat> but we went to out of the closet and um wait what was i gonna say we were shopping for christmas stuff yeah and... we were shopping for christmas stuff oh, damn oh no <laughs> i had a thought we went into yeah, out, we of went the closet. Into, out of the closet because we were talking about urban legends. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, and we came home and we brought stuff and we staged everything. <laughs> um, yeah. But, well, okay. I don't know. That's not will fucking come back to me. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we have been staging everything because we have been coming into... Co I'm so mad that I forgot my thought, you guys. Fuck me. It'll come back. It really will. Whatever. We've been in the Christmas spirit. I know mm -hmm. that we have been um, really just looking forward to uh, moving along 
into the holidays. And so yeah. I guess we can just get it right into this. We're going to just start this whole six weeks of holiday horror. Yep. And it's not with this episode, obviously, because we're going to be talking about cap. It's fuck my throat, dude. Do you have this? Like, do you have like this weird dry throat thing I going on? I think it's because we've been saging a lot. So a lot of smoke in the apartment has been getting into. Yeah. Like, because we have like some fucking demonic spirits up in this bitch, man. Like, I think that I at least have come to the conclusion that this place is haunted. I don't, it's just because we have brought a lot of items that have been pre-owned. Yeah. I, like, I believe in a lot of like bad energies being attached to certain yeah. shit. And we have this mirror that we found in our laundry room. Like it's super fucking cliche. Yeah. We have this, sh the shelving unit and mm -hmm. we ended up buying this desk and this dresser and this, um, the shelving unit that just came with it, um, for this guy down the hall. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, he was moving to Mexico and who knows what energy he had attached. It doesn't necessarily have to be something really bad in a, in a, in a spiritual bad omen type of way, but it could have been just sadness and, you know, depression that he had attached because he had to leave his stuff behind and move out, you know, so he's selling it down the hall and we're like we need this stuff why not yeah and like i said i've been in like a really kind of like super like iffy and chaotic and erratic headspace over the last couple of weeks and last night alex like lit up this sage stick that we've had and we had got this palo santo oh we got this sage while we were in solving as well too so we got both this palo santo and this sage while we were in <laughs> well, there's tariff he went too so he's giving his input it's funny so I mean, he was there i don't think that they can even hear the dog but hopefully like, not well, we, we have, have the, 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 the noise noiser thing going, <laughs> but it's so loud in our headphones the dog is oh. making so much noise right now so anyway we got this palo santo and this sage and we have been like smudging a, the house like yeah last night he just like deep cleansed the entire apartment and like chanting and all that type of stuff to like rid the spirits you know and exactly what i want in this house and what needs to be and stay and what needs to leave yeah and i just i felt it man like after it was over like leave it his just, body yeah i i felt like completely just like fucking lifted you know what i mean i felt like i have felt really heavy these last couple of mm -hmm. weeks and i can't even tell you why you know like i mean it's not like a secret that i have bpd and it's not a secret that like i just go through like you know all these insane like high highs and low lows and like these last few days has just been like really crazy low lows and a lot of um and me because of my believe sorry here i go again i'm just saying but I'm, I'm trying to i just what i want to say is it was a bad it was a week worth of a lot of dead coming back to earth because of the whole halloween week and the whole um day of the dead that celebrated around this area specifically because of hollywood cemetery there's a lot of dead lingering and with you know certain feelings that somebody already feels inside of their own body it's kind of like opening a door and inviting these things and these bad spirits and these bad depressed feelings into your body you know i got a fucking chill dude yeah I don't know, so this is where we were taking it's, this conversation I mean, you know, it actually happens so if you're like a depressed person you're kind of vulnerable to opening letting this door open be open you know and you're you're letting the spirit like just take over because yeah you know it, i'm it's susceptible, susceptible. Oh, <laughs> we've been doing this a lot like we've uh, like crazy. we kind of met like this we've yeah. met like kind of you exactly know, like what happened right now finishing each other's sentences and stuff and the other day i was like you know i really i'm really digging this 1989 taylor's version because you know we love taylor mm -hmm he was like oh you know out of the woods is really good and i had just put on that song he's listening to the song as i'm saying that so yeah. you know just really funny stuff has been happening like that and that is a prime example of everyday shenanigans yeah so <laughs> here we are um and that's kind of why i wanted to talk about this movie because these last the, the the last couple of months we both have just kind of like i'm the one who kind of expressed it specifically or uh, initially i suppose is the right word mm -hmm. that we you know have been holed up in this apartment and it's not necessarily a bad thing but we have kind of just created this routine based around this podcast and we've been working and we've been podcasting and working and podcasting and that's great because we're building something that's really cool and we're doing it together and we're watching a lot of movies and at the same time we kind of have just fallen out of like the normal routine that we had created and already had no. uh prior to meeting each other you know what i mean and we've already talked mm -hmm. about this you know before recording this obviously so and we've come to like an understanding that we have to get back into doing the other things yeah. that we 
did like we were doing other things and it was fine and something was missing so we started the podcast and then we just like we made this podcast be like the main priority yeah like, for these past weeks we we're just like okay we have to like really commit to this and we're podcasters now and we're going to dedicate all week long to yeah. one day, you know like focus 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 and so now we realize that we like we don't have to we don't have to do that we can prioritize the podcast and like kind of just watch a movie once and then podcast about it the next day and everything's podcast one to now like there have been significant (laughs) changes in a lot our perception of what this is and like how much work it actually entails and yeah it still takes a lot of work and a lot of dedication but like I think our perception of this has kind of changed in the sense of um it's it's a lot easier than yeah. it was. And and true, it, like, Stanley and I must ask ourselves a lot of questions about each other, but it's because you're actually watching our relationship unfold right in front of you guys as well. We're to, we've been together for, you know, less than a year. Yeah, and how many people do you know that have known each other for, like, I don't know, three or four months, and then they're like, yo, you want to start a podcast? Um, So, with all that rambling aside, I guess we should talk about some of the stuff that we watch because i feel like that's like a thing that we do Mm -hmm. when we start these episodes off um i watched this fun movie that tubi directed me to somehow called (laughs) reunion from hell uh directed by hayden newman and Uh uh, it has somehow slipped under my radar this entire time and there's a sequel that was made that is being released sometime in december called reunion from hell 2 and what's fun about the, the the movie I'm talking about, Reunion from Hell, it has Kathy Podwell from Night of the Demons. And we all know how much I love Night of the Demons. Big fan of that entire franchise. And, you know, th- this director and writer, he wrote this film as well, really did their homework. And I implore anyone to watch this movie. It is so, so, so fun. And there's so many fun Easter eggs throughout the entire movie um just dedicated to all horror fans and i can't wait to watch the sequel once it's available and i had the opportunity to chat with uh hayden i think at one point we're going to get him on the podcast and i'm really looking forward to it so i know you haven't had the opportunity to watch the movie yet but you will and i'm really looking forward to hearing what you have to say about it i saw the trailer you showed me that it was I, I was laughing through the entire theater. I mean, not laughing. It was just like something that I really i am into these type of films. I really liked yeah. what it showed me. So I'm so excited to see it's it. It's just like fun. And it, I know, loved it. Like I loved every single second of the trailer. Yeah, there are new movies just being made all the time. And horror movies are just a dime a dozen. You know what I mean? So it's it's fun to see horror flipped on its head and just mm-hmm. done differently and i was just smiling i was smiling yeah. a lot so yeah bravo to hayden newman yeah, good job on you guys watch i enjoy reunion. these yeah watch reunion from hell I, we also started whoever slew auntie rue i don't know if anybody's ever seen that but we didn't finish it we're gonna we're gonna watch that one down the line but that's a fun holiday film yeah. for those who haven't seen it it has shelly winters it's during her weird <laughs> psycho bitty revival she did that one, and um, what was that one? Um, what What's the Matter with Helen with Debbie Reynolds? Those are uh, kind of fun films. We love Debbie. We miss her. <laughs> we mostly kind of just watched like a bunch of trailers. Yeah, I think we're we getting ready this, for the yeah, holidays. We this weird trailer binge. We watched mm-hmm. like all the trailers for all the Silent Night movies because I'm probably the only weirdo in the world that has all the Silent Night movies on Blu-ray and. Um, I mean, spoiler alert for a future episode, we plan to talk about Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 5, because I don't think anybody in the world has talked about Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 5, and uh, it's so much fun, and I think that, whatever, we'll get there. It's such a fucking blast, guys. Uh, So watch it now, so by the time we do talk about it, within the next six weeks, you're prepared to uh, just laugh and (laughs) play along with us. Be right there with the combo. Yeah, fuck yeah. Do you know of any Thanksgiving movies? Thanksgiving movies? Like, 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 um like actual, horror related horror yeah related? i mean aside from like the stupid ones like not like thanks killing no, like, no 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 like know, anything with the name thanksgiving that is obviously a thanksgiving killing movie i mean obviously there's the eli roth movie that's coming out in the next couple yes. of weeks that we plan to watch mm-hmm. because it looks fucking badass i cannot wait and you know we didn't do this on purpose we didn't pick cabin fever because of 
you know, Eli Roth having a new movie coming out. And then no, it was movies. literally because you were slumped up like a teenager with your hoodie. I was. You guys, I've just been so <laughs> fucking sad. Like, it's just yeah. like, you know, some days, you know, people who experience like these, these really yeah. insane, like, just like crazy ass, like lows, like, we'll get it. Like, you just can't fucking leave the house, yeah. you know, and you just don't know how to... <laughs> like Nap out fucking of it. maneuver and like there have been days where i just will just sit here and stare out my window and yo we got a really gorgeous mm-hmm. view i mean griffith observatory is literally right you outside the window. It directly from where we're podcasting right now y'all i got a lot to be grateful for but there are some days where i'm just like fuck me nothing is nothing 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 is you know like it's like that never-ending story mm-hmm. thing like you're just like being sucked down like that fucking horse that is and a really it, bad place to be in that's it, a horrible it, it, zone and it's like i've been battling this shit since i was a kid and it's like i don't want this episode to be like about like yo like i'm grateful to have um tools and i'm grateful to have resources so mm-hmm. basically this is a the part of this <laughs> i guess and it's and it's, a, you know, it's a holiday so i guess this is kind of important to say something like this positive reinforcement it, yes and if you changing. if you are able to find someone to talk to like fucking get get that kind of help like and be really real important. i'm lucky to have someone like alex thank fucking god like, like he's a talk good to me about anything everything tell me everything don't fear me don't be scared like tell me every single thing and i want to know you and i'm not scared like mm-hmm. I yeah. want to know it all. Like, have a support group because it's really important. But yeah, but that's it. Um, but we were talking about what other Thanksgiving movies there are, and um, you know, yeah. If you guys know any, throw some out. We want to watch them before the actual season. I mean, the season is here. Know, just like mainly horror movies. Like, I know there are like regular Thanksgiving movies. Like, I, yeah. would you say like Adam Family Values is like a Thanksgiving movie? I I love those during the holidays. I think those are perfect movies to just have playing. Yeah, I think that Adam's Family Value is totally a thanksgiving movie yeah like son-in-law i Mm -hmm. i mean totally a thanksgiving movie i will i i didn't i don't i didn't watch it last year i think last year was the first year in my entire movie loving life i never watched son i didn't watch son-in-law but i love 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 it what are your like favorite thanksgiving movies i don't know i just go from like the same but it starts like with holiday movies already from like home alone repeatedly all the harry potter movies let's be real we've already watched home alone and home alone too yeah like, and I just like movies that set me into the season. So from October to November, I'll watch certain movies and they jump to like just straight elf, yeah. you know, Fred Claus, you know, all those what? movies. Jack Frost, right? Yes. See, I saw yeah, yeah. <laughs> once in theaters when I was a kid, never again. But it was such a fun thing to do. And I know that this is like a, a meme or something that has circled on the Internet a, a few times. But Ryan Co and I, ding, ding, ding. There's the Ryan Co mention. Yay. Um, we used to take that VHS from the horror movie and put it in the VHS of the family movie all the time at like Hollywood video and shit. Oh, yes. <laughs> that was like the funny thing to do. And then lo and behold, there's like a meme and like, like funny things floating around the Internet about how that's like a thing. Anyway, just random ramble. We love that Rambo. We miss video stores. We miss video stores. That's amazing when you can actually pop a video into this, you know, like this, the VCR and be that one playing the movie for us in the background as yeah. we're choosing the movie we want to take home. Hey, I got a VHS today. I bought The Rage, Carrie 2. For how much? Oh, how much was it? $2? I don't even know. I think it was a check. dollar check. Remind me if I make noise. And what's really cool about this, speaking of right Oh my right. gosh. It was a whole fucking dog. It was only one. How funny is that? So the cool thing about um this VHS is that the uh, I wasn't going to buy it because the the cover itself is in really shitty condition. But Ryan Co had mailed me an a, a, like a physical VHS cover of just the cover, not the VHS itself, but the cover. So I have the cover. So I'm gonna get rid of the cover, and now I have the Rage Carry Two. On Those VHS. motherfuckers did not rewind it. And it straight up says, "Be kind, rewind." I know. There's a big orange sticker. Everybody remembers yeah, that ooh. big orange sticker. Don't remember those little car rewinders? Car rewinders. They were like the shape of a car, what and you would you just put your v- your VHS in there, and it would just rewind the car. I mean, re- re- rewind the VHS. Tape. Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking really? about. Really. You guys know what I'm talking about? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, apparently, according to this, there are there's a movie called Pilgrim. There's a movie oh. called Black Friday. There's Thanks Killing, which I've heard of. There's Thanks Killing Three. Is there a Thanks Killing Two? Um, Blood Freak. 
poultry geist. Give me a break. Oh my gosh, Shut I need to see fuck that. Fuck <laughs> that sounds so fucking stupid. Poultry geist. Get out of here. Up. Adam Stanley values. <laughs> there not it is. too far off. Okay. Um, the last Thanksgiving. Okay, that looks cool. Krisha. Funny. Is that the only one? I think that says Christy. What did you it say? Doesn't say? It doesn't say Krisha. It says Christy, babe. No, it's an H. Oh, I'm an idiot. Okay. Oh, says you're, no, you're not. We're, you're we're really on, on Christy. We're there on, is a Christian. Christian. There is a Christy. You know, there is a really fun movie called um, Blood Feast, I think is what it's called. No, what the fuck is it called? Um, Something Feast. I think it's called Blood Feast. No. Blood Thirst. It's, uh, you know what? I'm going to have to find it. I don't even know if I'm going to edit this out. Because this is kind of funny. I was just like searching for this fucking movie. It, but it's about like this one, Blood Rage. Okay, oh, okay, so it's from 1987. It's about this. It's about two brothers that at the beginning, these two twins, one of the twins kills someone randomly at this drive in. And then years later, the brother escapes from a mental institution and then comes after the other brother and his mom at a Thanksgiving or something or, or of the sort. It's, Wait, the escapee is the one that killed? Uh, say it again. The escapee is the one that killed? I think that's what you're led to believe, and I think oh. there's, like, some huge twist at the end. But that would be a fun one to talk about, too. Oh, there... Okay, so apparently there are options. Yeah, there's, like, know. a dozen right now. But we're never talking about Thanksgiving 3, even though I think I have told Kai from class that that's something he needs to watch. But I don't know why I've suggested that when there's no Thanksgiving 2, it looks like. Is there a mm-hmm. Thanksgiving 2? Whatever. I don't know why we're fucking talking about this. All right. I'm oh, still going to watch it, though. We should. <laughs> we watched Black Sabbath. Yes. That Mario Bava movie. And goddamn. That shit's crazy. Holy shit. It It is crazy. Visually, what a stunning movie. Yeah. The colors are amazing in these Italian films. I love them. (laughs) And I don't know. I think it was just something I assumed. But we watched a version that was dubbed in Italian. Mm -hmm. And it looked like it was originally filmed yeah. in english but watching it in italian was really really something yeah the words didn't match the mouth it not at all but um it still had like this weird like kind of interesting effect to it mm-hmm. it was it was a really it was a really good movie it, it was, was sexy spooky, and it was sexy as fuck mm-hmm. like the first story especially yeah with the two women yeah uh i thought that was kind of kind of an the interesting drop of water was the that was the one that we watched one. it for because we saw that on 101 scariest movie uh-huh. movie moments on shutter or whatnot you yeah. guys need to watch that movie just because of that particular part the drop of water Ugh. i think that's like the the reason that people would watch it uh spooky shit anything that dies smiling is scary i completely agree <laughs> smiling itself is kind of scary yeah it is i mean pearl that we movie smile that, right that whole pearl thing yeah I don't think Smile is all it's hyped up. I don't think I've watched it. I like Oh, it. I was actually watching it. Remember, I, I saw the intro and I was like, I like this movie. What is it? And Smile, and you're like, oh. This, I guess, we could lead into the Cabin Fever movies because we also watched all the Cabin Fever. Well, no, you did not watch all the Cabin Fever movies. You didn't watch Patient Zero. No, I didn't. I watched no. mostly mm-hmm. all of Patient Zero. So we watched, obviously, Cabin Fever, the original, which is what we're reviewing today. Mm-hmm. Um... I think people, I don't know if people actually thought we were going to waste our fucking time reviewing the remake. No. I mean, get the fuck out of here, you guys. No. Um, but we did watch it, and I will say, we'll get into it later, but there yeah. were a few parts that I did actually like. But again, we'll, we'll, we'll fucking cross that bridge when we get there. Um, we also watched Cabin Fever 2 <laughs> last night. Yeah, that's, a, I, I, you know me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Alex I loves it. everything. Yeah. Um, but you know what? I actually like that movie too. Yeah, it's I a like... pretty insane, dope ass movie. I didn't know what the fuck I was watching. Honest to God, I was watching everything. There was circus music going on in the background. The, all the lights were flashing. It's a, it's <laughs> so fucking surreal. Cabin Fever Two is like a, yeah. it's such a circus. Dude. I saw yeah. everything. It's um, it's it's intense. And then also Patient Zero, which, again, I didn't watch the entire thing. I kind of had it on while I was folding clothes the other day. But what I saw of it was was all right. It had some pretty good gag effects. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it tried to amp up a little bit of the the nastiness of the second one. The second one is a supremely mean movie. Mm-hmm. I think that we can agree on that, that the, the second one had some pretty mean fucking shit in it. Yeah. The, the first movie is mean. It's also it's also doing something on purpose i think it's a Eli, fucked up movie just yeah <laughs> like like we'll just put it out there right now that like, mm-hmm. cabin fever is really fucked up and i have like one of my biggest qualms with it and i think we already talked about this outside of this is that it's being 
it was being marketed as like a horror comedy. Yeah. And I know that you found some stuff that was funny about yes. it. Like you, like even when we watched it last night together, because uh-huh. we, we both watched it separately and then we watched it together last night. I was giggling like a school. You were giggling. I was not fucking laughing. Uh-huh. There was like, to me, there was like nothing funny about but, and, this. You know, and then I would split myself from me laughing at it. And then I would look at you and I'd be like, why is he so serious? And then I would place myself in the situation and be like, you know what? Maybe this is scary to some people. Like the reaction of the, yeah. you know, like, so yeah, that's a horror in itself. But to me, I find it, you know, the, the comedic part yeah. of it were funny. Too. And I think that like from like a nervous perspective, yeah. I think that like, oh, okay. Like uh-huh. maybe that th- that's why people, you know, when people get scared, they do yeah. kind of do like the laughing thing. So yeah. like I was in, in respect, like I was looking at you, like mm-hmm. how is he fucking laughing at this? Yeah. Like <laughs> how horrific, <laughs> you know what I mean? And everybody's different. So I it's get it. nuts because then you must think like this guy is crazy like, what a fucking psychopath <laughs> exactly but then you know i've also i watch other movies though when i think that i have there are certain scenes in those films that have the same effect that you were displaying you know what i mean yeah so i, I yes. get it like every movie yeah. is different for every person i'm telling you i literally look at you the way that one guy in the movie may was looking at may what's his name oh, yeah. she was Jeremy showing him those yeah. movies and then he's just staring at her like yeah you're crazy you're so funny (laughs) yeah yeah this movie this movie struck a little bit differently i don't remember the last time i watched this movie Mm -hmm. and uh, side note the movie version that we watched is the unrated cut and i didn't know i mean this is a director's cut i had no idea that i even owned this i just thought that i had cabin fever I didn't know that there was a director's We didn't cut, realize but... it until we saw the final girl and we're like, yeah, what the fuck is happening? so while we were watching the final girl, what do you No, think? I just <laughs> I meant oh, it was Paul. Like the I, oh, final. Paul. He started fighting. We're like, wait, what yeah. the fuck are we watching? I don't remember Paul this. Is definitely the final girl. But yeah, there was like a few times where I was like, wait, there's a new scene. This is something I don't remember. There, there was a few things that happened uh, throughout the film that I just didn't remember. And it's because this is basically a different movie. Uh, not different there's just different scenes scattered throughout that i just didn't remember Mm -hmm. um okay but before we get into all that what's your relationship to this movie when did you first see this i don't remember what actually i do remember watching it with a group of friends um we were sitting around watching this movie just uh, honestly getting grossed out um by all the blood that was being spat out to me and just the clotty and gross i just remember it with you know sitting around oh speaking of the 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 gore uh, these practical effects are really good Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah they are yeah a and b i think we should give a shout out right now to the k and b effects department you know howard Berger and greg nicotero and all those guys because we do pay attention to these special effects i'm being a little uh (laughs) obnoxious right now because out of out of the two reviews here we go uh, no i'm gonna mention it Uh, (laughs) this is just how like i'm just being kind of a dick yeah. Out of the two reviews that we've gotten on this, uh, on our Apple podcast <laughs> reviews, we've gotten one, one really great one that's like glowing <laughs> and, uh, you know, and again, we've asked for like whatever feedback, you know, yeah. okay, feedback we'll take feedback it. Feedback and again, we're, we're laughing at this, criticism. Um, but then we got another one <laughs> with one star and this guy's, um, basically saying we don't know shit, which is yeah. fine. Cool. And you know, we announced that every fucking podcast, like, I don't know shit guys. Yeah. You know, he basically is saying that, um, we prefer, uh, CGI effects over practical effects and i don't think once have we ever mentioned uh that no not at all and i think the movies that we've reviewed are non-cgi yeah a lot of the movies we have have, um don't really feature effects that are um computer generated yeah so um we just wanted to be clear that um just for understanding out there like yeah i i have little knowledge uh, mainly about some movies stanley has tons of it and yeah just to interrupt you i'm i'm also still learning yeah exactly but you know what to to us the thing is for the people People that understand me that don't know much that are out there dating their boyfriends that actually do know much you know we're sitting all there watching the same movies i'm giving the understanding you know to those people that don't and you're letting us you know yeah you're giving the info and it, you know what it's it's all in fun you guys so yeah i love like, learning all this shit yeah again it, we're laughing at this because it's no. just it i don't think the guy actually has is listening yeah. to so us i was like well he's listening or he's not it's so specific in the review of what we are not <laughs> paying attention to or my name but um i we, was like have we reviewed cgi movie oh, i don't think so so we just want to like my um, favorite's the exorcist yeah because just, it's oh, original yeah, that's, yeah and those practical so effects are bomb you know like um dick smith they really they really nail those things so i know 
to a certain degree what the fuck I'm talking about, mm-hmm. motherfucker. And I know the questions that I ask. Um, yeah. So that being said, um, welcome to primetime, bitch. You can fuck yourself. <laughs> and um, you. I'm just going to leave that there. Yeah. Sorry. We're not those people. Either. Um, yeah. So or maybe I just. <laughs> so as you were saying. You uh you liked the effects and they made an impact on you. They're yes. great yes. practical effects. Yeah, so I I love this movie more than the twenty sixteen one. Was it twenty sixteen the Yeah. The, yeah. It's just it was just so much better. And the cast is so much better to me and everything is just so gross and naughty. I guess we can take a minute to just compare and contrast. Mm-hmm. I mean, we will in just a second. I saw this movie opening night. When it came out, I was with. It was. It was. I mean, two thousand two. It, it was released in two thousand two mm-hmm. um, at the Toronto ish at, at TIFF. It came out at. TIFF. Oh yeah. Okay. And then it came out a year later in the United States. So I saw it. Um, I think my senior year. It was September of two thousand three, and I went with two or three people from um my drama class. Mm-hmm. And even then, everybody knew me as someone who was just very into heavy horror movies. And I think the people I was with were um people who found it funny. I think mm-hmm. that they were the people who were just like, oh, this is over the top. This is this is kind of stupid. We don't get it. Well, and... let me ask you a question because you probably know this answer. Yeah. You know from Scream and then they started doing all those scary movies. What year did those scary movies come out? The Scream resurgence happened in 96. Scream came out in December of 96. So I was... But those mockery in... movies of like, you know, scary movie and all that shit. Scary movie came out in 2000. Okay, so then we it's started watching scary movies. So then when they when they when Cabin Fever came out, that's why we saw comedy in in horror movies yeah. now because of fucking scary movies. And I think you had to kind of add a sprinkle of humor to this mm-hmm. kind of stuff in order to get it released into a theater. Like I think oh. you kind of had to have that element of funny in I it. I believe he wore he won awards, right? From that film, what is it? Like some type of independence film festival type of thing that he showed this movie in oh i I don't know he won awards for this movie oh i have no idea Mm -hmm. i didn't even check to see if it won any awards you know me i have no info but i found out that he did win some awards it's so funny because i just i didn't even bother like doing that kind of background information on it um or background research on it i did bother to look like where the inspiration for the movie came from and i mean i guess he got some sort of skin infection while he was Hilarious. while he was farming in iceland or something mm-hmm. like that. with some friends in a cabin and he got a skin rash yeah me. it's something's as simple as that now we're and talking so, about eli roth who is the writer and director of the movie and are you a fan of eli roth films i am yes i'm a fan of his personally like i i love his work i ran into him at Runyon canyon once so scary and he is one of the nicest guys yes. and i i was walking down the hill and i saw him and you he has just such distinct features you mm-hmm. can see him immediately yep. And I took my headphones off and we made eye contact and I looked at him and I was like, oh, my God, man, Cabin Fever is one of my favorite movies. And he was like, oh, fuck, yeah, man, that makes me so happy. And he kept walking. And that was the only interaction we had. And it was enough for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I just thought that was so cool. Uh, so, cool. so, yeah, he I, I, I've always been a fan of his movies. I loved this movie the, the moment I saw it. And when Hostel came out, I thought it was such a fucking genius movie that was like right around the time the torture porn mm-hmm. thing started i thought it was such an interesting commentary on everything that was happening at the time then hostile 2 came out and i thought it was so much better than hostile 1 and i wasn't a terrible fan of the green inferno but i still kind of dug it for what it was and i thought the effects were outstanding you know knock knock was cool i loved the cast i loved that he got keanu reeves to drop in i gen- generally like his films mm-hmm this was where he started and this was his calling card of you know to the in, to the industry and he took inspiration from movies like texas chainsaw and last house on the left and evil dead and um you know i think that's pretty obvious david lynch was a silent producer on the movie i didn't know that oh really yeah watching it now i guess it has those lynchy vibes yeah like you can totally see like twin peaks throughout it yeah you can see his work throughout the film yeah were you a boy meets world yes okay, did you watch <laughs> yeah. that so uh-huh. you recognize yeah, right yeah. yeah yeah i i watched a lot of boy meets world growing up so i was very familiar with him as well and fun fact he almost ran me over once oh hey that's on good... sunset in fairfax good... yeah run me uh-huh. over so i found a random fact from the internet movie database the sound mixer john neff and the sound design in this movie is wild like everything down to like the flies 
to so gross. i know it's like everything is just like fucking disgusting Ooh, the sound of the flies in the intro is just nasty yeah dude. and the and the title sequence it, yeah the title sequence is it's like I, off the I, chain I, it does something to my body like the noise is coming out of that film's yeah, intro because it has like the um, it, it starts off white and mm-hmm. then it like the, the the white as the titles like keep flashing across the screen and stuff it just like starts to rot away yeah. it's like turns white to like mm-hmm. brown to yellow to just carcassing in front of us and screen so and the good. flies just sound so loud it's, mm, it's so good mm-hmm. did you know that the girl who plays karen uh jordan ladd that she is cheryl ladd's daughter and cheryl ladd was one of the original charlie's angels are you serious yeah oh jordan ladd was in a movie called nowhere which is one of my uh-huh. favorite uh greg Araki movies uh we love jordan ladd we do yeah oh oh so what i was saying was um the sound mixer john neff survived the real flesh eating um disease which is called uh what the fuck is it called fasciitis something fasciitis uh, ne- ne- nect- uh, nectaritis nect- oh fuck i have the name for it i'm <laughs> gonna find it here in just a minute but yeah he survived it and he contracted it in a hospital uh during surgery and it took 13 days of non-stop intensive care and medical attention to save his life and he says that the makeup in the film is 100 percent accurate oh it's called necrotizing fasciitis that is awesome that's a really weird name like necrotizing Ugh, have you ever experienced anything like that no um besides chicken pox <laughs> oh i fuck which is I mean, what i was scarring my stomach because of chicken pox. Right? let me see here oh shit i see it yeah i'm experiencing something like that right now you know that yeah, I have it on my armpit. It's so fucked up. It's Maybe that's subconsciously why I there. fucking I'm rotting away. Shit. But I finally found like a strong neosporin that's helping. Well, he got it. You got. He just kept on putting some that wasn't like powder type, and I kept saying like, get something that has powder. Get something that has. I mean, like, I was using so everything dry. under the sun that wasn't not moist. Yeah. Ooh, that word. Sorry. <laughs> not a lot of people are fans of that. It's funny that word. people don't like that word. <laughs> moist i like it Sorry. i don't think it's true i, it's I like it like a good moist tamale or a good moist cake <laughs> moist. moist moist get really close to okay don't mouth. say it like that no, do it. Oh. Come, come close moist that's moist. disgusting okay Sexy. asm or was it Sexy. SM, asmr yeah is that what it's called yeah um okay so we are bouncing because i think we're just excited so Let's compare and contrast real quick the original and the remake because i don't really want to talk about the remake yeah. i don't like the remake i think the remake is one of the few movies in the history of movies that has a zero percent on rotten tomatoes Mm -hmm. let me double check that so i don't look like an asshole but i think i'm right to me it's just like the broadway version of it it's like they put on a play yeah it's like you're putting on a fucking play it's like um it's like a really bad acting class yeah is putting on a production of Cabin Fever. And it's unfortunate because it looks good. You know what I mean? It actually looks really, really good um, production-wise. And uh, it's filmed in Portland, Oregon. We found out yeah. that it's filmed in Portland because the whole time we were looking at it and we were like, why does this look kind of familiar? Mm-hmm. Like, it has familiar, like, forestry and it's just beautiful location. It really is. And it turns out that it is filmed in my hometown. It said right there, location filmed, Portland. And, um, you know, there was some acting choices that a couple of the actors made that I kind of liked. Nadine Crocker, the girl who played Marcy, I enjoyed her. She's amazing, and she is gorgeous. Yeah, she is really pretty. I was right. Cabin Fever has a 0%. This is the remake. Come on, and, um, guys. I mean, it just is so unnecessary. It's one of those movies that, like... This is when I say, they showed up, they did the work, the directors, the people. You don't get to defend this movie. But I did like the part where Marcy um, comes out of the, the cabin. Shotgun. Uh, well, she comes out of the cabin and is face-to-face with that. Oh, girl. yeah. Well, the, my first part was when she got the shotgun and first scared the dog away, remember? Right before um, Paul went in to go check on Karen. Yeah. There's the dog, and he's like, oh, that damn dog's back. And then they don't know what to do. And then Marcy in the background just shoots the gun Wait, in the air. So why did you like that part? Because she looks like a fucking badass. Okay, yeah. I mean, so I, yeah, she's. That's when she's letting us know this girl's a badass. She's probably the best part, like, yeah. best actor mm-hmm. in the film. Yeah. I like it when she is on her knees and she's face to face with that dog. 
and you yeah. know that dog's going to kill her. And then she screams, come on, just fucking do it. Yeah. Like, go, let's go. Like, I think that's horrific. And that was that the trailer. Kills her off of, off of the screen. It is in the trailer. She's the one that gave us that little short Texas Chainsaw Massacre scene, right? Um, No, that's in the original. Oh, you know what? Yeah. It probably happens in the remake, too. Oh, I, I but I noticed. To be fucking yeah. honest, I wasn't paying attention because I was... Mm -hmm. It's kind of offensive when a movie does that. Psycho 1998 did that too. It's just a frame by frame remake. And mm -hmm. like Eli Roth produced it. And like they even just basically took his script. They took out all the comedic elements, which again, it's all about perception. I don't know if it's funny. I don't think it's funny. The second one? Um, the, the remake. One? The remake's not funny. The they remake, took out all the, took out elements, all the yeah. funny stuff. Yeah. And um, what, what people would consider funny. Yeah, which and, is only like in two scenes worth i think in the original that are funny yeah like the middle i mean the beginning and the end it's it, it just depends on what your sense of humor is mm -hmm. you know and what you what you get your rock out from yeah and they amped up the death scenes a little bit like the, the whole thing with the um oh that's um, annoying karen the, with, the way they kill karen in the shed the outhouse <laughs> you're so funny <laughs> um so inappropriate they just fucking they yeah. brutally she doesn't die. She's still like, kill me, kill me. yeah, like it's so it's so wild. And then like they have this this off the wall ending that's so so dumb. Yeah, and um, it's it's just silly. It's silly. But mm -hmm. you know, we did like the sequel. The sequel yeah. took some chances. They um, you know, Ty West is the director of the sequel, and Ty West is responsible for movies like House of the Devil and Pearl and X and the future Maxine, like those wonderful movies, The Sacrament. It and, starts right where it ends. And yeah, and it picks up exactly where it left off, just like Alex said. Mm -hmm. And they got Ryder Strong to come back for a few minutes. And it, it's it's a gore fest. It it puts the gory and gory gaze. And mm -hmm. it it it's really it's speaking of offensive, it's fucking offensive. And it makes for a good double feature. So watch Cabin Fever. Watch Cabin Fever 2. Yeah. Now that's something that is Cabin more. Cabin Fever 2. Oof. It's more funny. Yeah. Like that's it's something. Like, in that like, one. It's, <laughs> so there was a couple of times where I grabbed my mouth. Like, yeah. I, and I've only seen that movie all the way through once. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's a movie that you just kind of have to own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those two are really good movies. You just kind of have to own it. And I think this is probably a good time to get into our episode about Cabin Fever, guys. So, Alex, why didn't you tell us about Cabin Fever? Cool. Okay, let's go. Directed by Eli Roth, written both by Eli Roth and Randy Perlstein, which I think I had told you already that it was also some type of family affair because one of his brothers was a producer in it. <laughs> oh, um, Adam. Yeah. I think his brother's yes. name is Adam Roth. So, uh, yeah. wait. so wait, his brother appears in the movie, right? That's the other brother, Adam, I believe. Adam, you just, I think Adam's a producer. Okay, Adam's yeah, a yeah. Producer. Then there's the other brother, but yeah, okay. he also does, he's the smiling guy from the story that okay, we'll yeah. get to later. The movie does star Ryder Strong, with Jordan Ladd, uh, Serena Vincent, James DeBello, hilarious, Joey Kern, Giuseppe Andrews, which I didn't realize was the denominator from Never Been Kissed. Giuseppe Andrews? Yeah, you know, the, oh my God, <laughs> the little nerd boy. That would make two people from Never Been Kissed, because oh. Jordan Ladd is one of the popular girls from Never Been Kissed. Too. Oh, no way. And I was trying to think of where else Jordan Ladd was from, because, of course, you know, we, I could have just looked That's it up. That's so cool. I didn't realize that. But, I mean, I just recognized Jordan Ladd from you know, nowhere and a couple other things, but yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. And Giuseppe Andrews is also from Independence Day. Yes. Yes. He did okay. a lot of stuff. He's done a lot of stuff. Yeah. He was a kid actor, which I thought he was so gross in this movie. Like, ooh, and he's, he's also, in, he's also in the sequel. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Okay. Uh, okay. Music by Nathan Barr, which is so, oh, this music is just so bizarre. It's the like, music, like, it's and like, I'm gonna like, I know I rave a lot about the music yeah. in previous episodes on previous films, but this music you guys is, yeah. is a really, really big, Big, big contributing factor yeah. on why this movie works so well from and beginning I, to end as you follow the pipe it's just so gross there was additional music composed by angelo bandelamenti mm -hmm. um who has worked with uh, david lynch in the past he did yeah. um you know twin peaks he's done a lot of david lynch stuff it just reminds me of everything black and gray and like those little short films that cartoons that they used to show back back in the days that were just so sad and depressive yeah but then also, like, there's other parts where the music is, like, just, like, filthy. Like, yeah. you feel like you mm -hmm. need to be showering because it's just, like, so, like, those violins and those strings yes. are so dirty. It, it is those strings. You know, also. But uh, we should also mention that Nathan Barr um, 
did uh, some True Blood episodes and also did the movie Uncle Frank, which was directed by Alan Ball. Oh, yeah, we love that movie. Oh, that movie is so fucking good. Yeah, traumatized. Okay. It's so sad. <laughs> yeah, really. Okay, so uh, released on September 14, 2002 at TIFF, which, which you were telling us about. Mm-hmm. Um, and then September 12, 2003 in the United States. Okay. This movie had a budget of $1.5 million. Box office thirty point six million made its money. Yeah, back. that's a lot of good money. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a score of sixty two percent. IMDb score five point six out of ten. Same as Urban Legend. Oh, yeah. Which Wait, which do you like better? I'm gonna go with this one. I'm gonna go with yeah, this one too. Absolutely. Okay. And also, like we like to say, if it's above five, then it's halfway. It's fine. I mean, and I uh, to me, it's like oh, you know, like it. Hey, whatever. Yeah. It's watchable. Yeah. Oh, this is more than watchable. Yeah. Like this is this is quite I mean, I would give this a pretty a, a much higher score than that. I yeah, you know, they're there. It's like a watchable level. So so even Metacritic gave it a score of fifty six out of a hundred. Yeah. Oh, yeah. all right. Okay. And you know what, Alex? You can just read the back of the DVD to us. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> Jeff, Karen, Paul, and Marcy, and Bert embark on a vacation deep in the mountains with the top down and the music up. They drive to a remote cabin to enjoy their last days of decadence after college. Then somebody gets sick, Karen's skin starts to bubble and turns as something grows inside her. Tunneling beneath her flesh, as the others try to save her, they look at one another to realize that any one of them could be next. One by one, they turn on each other, and the rest of the town realizing that the disease is the least of their problems. All right. Okay, so I love that it gets so graphic in the sense of it says, what does it say? That that her skin starts to bubble? Yeah, her skin starts to gross. Gross. Hey, have you ever seen The Ruins? No, I have not. Mm. Oh. Okay, yeah, just just <laughs> just curious. You said tunneling underneath the flesh, and that oh. made me think. Um, I guess we should just get into it, huh? Yes. All right, guys. Cabin fever goes like this. You know, when you've known someone a long time, and you just want to kiss them just to see if they're a good kisser or not. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Stay. Can you help me? No, 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 no. She's not coming near me! You're You're cross off! You guys gonna kill each other now? You don't look so hot. Help me. I need need a doctor. I don't want to get sick. I don't want any of us getting sick. We just don't want to get it. I see what we got here right now. He's coming towards us! Alright, back off. Looks like he was skinned alive. The party man. Is it safe? Don't worry about me. Leave it alone! Somebody help! Blood burning! Trigger warning. I know. Um, there's a lot of like dog stuff. I feel like somebody really fucking hates animals. Yeah. This filming of this and movie. um, before we get into this, we should let you know that we are going to slash up and bleed out this movie. If you haven't seen this, you should stop Postrated. this podcast. Yeah. Cabin fever is about to be ruined for mm-hmm. you. We open on a white screen with black titles. The white screen rots to yellow to brown to red. I already discussed this. Uh, anyway, uh, we cut to a forest. It's daytime. A man is carrying a rabbit back to his campsite. <laughs> carrying. Uh-huh. Carrying. A man carries. A ra- That's a funny word. A yeah. man carries a rabbit back to his campsite. I don't know why I read you're, these things like this. <laughs> well, that's how you say it. You're just thinking about it too much because you're a <laughs> He doesn't realize that his dog is dead. So the man tries to entice the dog with the rabbit and then notices that the dog is not moving he lifts the dead dog's arm and blood splashes him in the face yeah he's he's, screaming he's like sliced open yeah so the dog is like basically like rotting Mm -hmm. um and we get the idea that uh something is terribly wrong (laughs) it's just confusing because the dog looks like sliced open like something took all of his guts out yeah but then it has nothing to do with that really i mean i am just assuming that the dog has it whatever it is oh and it just exploded 
I mean, like he, well, yeah. So you're confused on why it's the blood splashed him in the face. No, no, no. Because the blood splashed after he opened, like after he picked up the arm, but the dog had already been sliced like in half. I mean, I don't know why the blood splashed him in the face either. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it sounds like you're confused on why the blood splashed him in the face. So he lifted up his leg and then got splashed. Yeah. But why was the dog sliced already? I'm sure the dog had just been rotting away. It's, yeah, so yeah, that's what the, it is. Yeah. So the flesh was just like, kind of like a dead whale where you just poke it and the stick goes all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Something of the okay, score. Yeah. We are then introduced to Marcy, played by Serena Vincent, Jeff, played by Joey Kern, Karen, played by Jordan Ladd, Bert, played by James DeBello, and Paul, played by Ryder Strong. They have just finished college for the summer and are headed to a cabin for a getaway. Um, I hated Marcy immediately, but it was only upon the first impression. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you think about these characters upon their first introductions? I'm excited about the cast. I like them already. Um, she kind of sounded like Rob Zombie's wife to me. So she was a little bit annoying in the beginning. Yeah, they're all really attractive. Yeah, they really are. Like, I can't stand Joey Kern's haircut. That's Jeff. Yeah. Jeff is played by Joey uh -huh. Kern. He has that um, Lord Farquhar hair. That's who it fucking is it's like Thank you know like straight and then it curls into the face the whole time i was like he looks swedish he looks like a dutch boy like i couldn't yeah. i was not trying to think of like anything that like i those could vintage christmas dolls yeah i didn't want to be offensive we're not out there to offend we're not but prime time one is oh <laughs> welcome to prime time bitch no, welcome to prime time fuck you and yo, I'm not being an asshole, but the gore effects are pretty badass. Even like this far in, just with that, like, I mean, I'm not here to like support dead dogs, mm -hmm. but the dead dog effect is really, it's, it's effective. Watch this movie with a group of friends, I suggest, because it's fun. Yeah, you could probably make this into a cool drinking game if mm -hmm. you drink. Like, just every time someone... Blood spits out of their Every mouth. time someone, like, s s and bleeds or that, what, from their mouth. Dennis, Dennis bites somebody. Every time someone drinks beer, Some. you drink beer. Every time... There's comedy, but it's pancakes. not... Pancakes. Oh, yeah, pancakes, pancakes. Is what he yells out, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of things you could do to make this a fun drinking game. I also love that Eli Roth is letting us know right away what kind of movie this is and what we're in for from the very beginning. Because, you know, a lot of movies start off very in-your-face horror movies. Do. Yeah. And this one, it's bam. Like, we see the killing right away, and it's so extreme. Yeah. And this one, phone is, call or this something. one is very, very, it's, it's bam, 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 right mm -hmm. from the very beginning. We know what we're in for. The group stop at a little convenience store along the way. Outside, a little kid with a terrible blonde mullet is sitting on the porch swing. His name is Dennis, and he's played by Matthew Helms. Paul sits next to him, and when he extends his hand to shake it, the kid bites him. The store owner comes out, pulling the child by the hair. While Paul is washing his hand in the stream out back, and Marcy and Jeff and Bert are inside, Karen witnesses the store owner violently accost the child, and then run off into the woods. Okay, so this part I don't remember in the original movie. So I feel like that this scene was added uh -huh. into the director's cut, but I might just be imagining that. Oh, no, yeah, I think so, because I, even in, like, when they walk into the store, she's still, like, giving him the gesture of what she just witnessed. <laughs> yeah, weird. I just don't remember it, but it could be that Mandela effect type mm -hmm. of thing. Inside the store, the elderly store clerk uses racial slurs, yeah. and it's super fucking uncomfortable. And I remember being in the movie theater and that being really uncomfortable, too, because I... Hello. It's, it's super, like, uncomfortable, the word period, or, I mean, what comes out the slur, but it's they kind of clean it up at the end but it's i mean still like it's still the not, it's yeah. not it's not cleaned it's up not good <laughs> so yeah bert attempts to steal a snickers bar uh the friends then head to a cabin in the woods and then our horror movie begins yes you know what do you think of the music it, to me i'm telling you i can listen to this music by itself the guitar specifically mm -hmm. is so good here there's like a banjo like a weird light like banjo. i want to drive in it with light rain yeah yeah, it's good. Like it's We're driving this, light rain with it. Yeah. This light spring rain thing going mm -hmm. on, you know? And um, I can s definitely see, like, the lynchisms here, uh, specifically through the, this convenience store set piece. And then it only gets more excessive throughout. And um, fun fact, the little boy, Dennis. Dennis, seen Dennis, he grew up to be a talented ballet dancer, I guess. Oh, look at him. Yeah, and uh, this is just something. I, think. I used to think the guy that plays Bert was cute. <laughs> 
It's so funny because me too. Okay, I, I'm close. so glad that you're agreeing with me because I thought that I was like such a weird pig. No, I, was, I always honestly, I had such, I was like so into him as well, like watching this movie growing up. I was like, that guy's, okay, and like yeah, he was such my taste. I thought that maybe it's because he was like a rednecky, like he was dirty, just thicker. Yeah, yeah, he was a dirty. But it was like, me, like this 15, 16 year old me. No, yeah, that's like, not now, obviously. I mean, this movie came out when that's when I was into him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And also, it's kind of weird to see Ryder Strong grow up because I was not ne- I mean, obviously, I've been, you know, little gay Stanny all my life. But I remember thinking the kid that played Corey was cute on mm-hmm. Boy Meets World, even yeah. when I was a little boy. Like, and I, I mean, I always thought boys were cute, you know, yeah. but I never thought Sean was cute. No, me either. So to see him grow up uh-huh. in this, um, I still I mean, he's attractive, I guess. Even Corey's I, brother. What was his name? Um. Oh, what the fuck Matthew? was his name? Matt? No. Yeah, I, it was Matt. Huh? It was his, the actor's name was Will Friedel, but I can't. I think it was Matthew. I don't think it was Matthew. No. No. I just remember Mr. What was Mr. Mr. Feeney. Mr. Feeney always like yelling at him. What the? That Matthew was such it, a bad. Matthews was his na- last name. Matthews, Matthews was his last name. It was name. Corey, Corey, Corey Matthews. Matthews. I don't know. Sean and. Sean and Corey in Topanga. Uh-huh. Hmm. I don't know. Again, we can Anybody? Totally Google this. I mean, we're, <laughs> we're literally just that to. fucking lazy. We just yeah. don't want to move our fingers. We'll look up what came out in 1982 yeah. during the yeah. box office. <laughs> but yeah, what I was saying is, I just don't think that Ryder Strong uh, isn't attractive. Not even in this movie, movie, I'm telling you, when he's trying to hook up with Karen, in, I'm like, save your general. nipples. Yeah, he's he does have hairy nipples. They just look weird. <laughs> yeah, he does have like a weird hair pattern around his nipples. Uh-huh. It's like a circle. It's like, that's like fucking... You need to shave that off so your man hair can grow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was also going to ask, do you think any of this is funny so far? What? In what we've movie. talked about? Well, no, but I think we're funny. But do you think to me, only the intro, like that whole um, racist remark. But it's it's That's because funny. it's not funny. It's it's not funny until the end when you well, actually when catch it. Wrapped it. Up. Yeah. yeah. So okay. You kinda like okay. Have to so on to I see. It. Okay. They hone in on it. You're right. Okay. Because it is kind of like when they first throw it out, there, it's going to be like, oh, it's one of these like heavy, like you know, kind of like the Hills Have Eyes movies where they just don't give a shit about how they offend people. Yeah. No. And, no. And Eli Roth does not give a fuck. No. 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 And the, he has made that clear throughout his entire career. Mm-hmm. It's like that Tarant that Tarantino effect. You know, yeah. like he there's no filter. On a lot of these movies, you know, and uh, there, but there's an audience, there's an audience for these yes, movies, and here course. we are, we're walking it, and we're breaking <laughs> it down, and we like it, mm-hmm. like, we do like this movie. So, um, the cabin also is mm-hmm. clearly inspired by the cabin from the Evil Dead, and that's perfectly okay. And I like this fits. cabin better than the remake. Oh, the, the cabin in the remake is a house. It's a house. It's like an Airbnb. Airbnb. Yeah. It's uh-huh. fucking st- oh, it's so bad. It's, it's just, hor- and who it, stays there? Who would stay there? It doesn't work. It does it not. It doesn't work. Like this one is old and it's scary and mm-hmm. smack dab in the middle, middle of the in the middle. In the middle of the woods. And even in the day it's scary. You it know, the Blair Witch a run for her money, girl. Yeah, like this one is Move up. really really good. And the one in the remake is like on the edge of the river mm-hmm. and it's, it's too uh, pretty. It's fucking. It's, it's really pretty. But again, it's Oregon, so yeah. it's it's beautiful, and it's you know, but it's it, just, it just doesn't work. It's a different movie. Um, we should point out that this is called Bunyan Mountain Getaways. Oh, where they're staying. I had it in my notes that Jeff looks like a pilgrim or a Swede. I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. It's the hair, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Karen and Paul decide to go for a swim in the nearby lake, and Bert takes a rifle <laughs> to go play in the forest. So weird. Yeah. We, hot. <laughs> kind of hot, huh? Yeah. Like we find out that Paul has the hots for Karen. Gross. Yeah. Jeff and Marcy have kinky sex. Bert pees in the woods. Random quirky moments. Okay. That kinky sex. There's a part. Mar- what does Marcy do to Jeff? I so always wonder. Did he decide that uh, that she put her a thumb up his ass? It just like he makes it sound seem like it's bigger uh, than I a mean, thumb, or that he just it never happens. Yeah, you know. But he was pretty happy. He was happy to get his butthole play with. <laughs> where's Marcy at? <laughs> Everyone with the Marcy. I know, where's Marcy at? Let's be real. <laughs> There's a lot of gay stuff in this movie. Yeah, it's it's comedically funny. <laughs> so maybe that's where the comedy is. I mean, like, yeah. what is she Like, doing? that didn't have to happen. The way that Jeff reacts to the way what she... It's, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, it, I love it when um 
You make me laugh. (laughs) So maybe there is some funny shit. So it's funny when she's like, what are you going to shoot? And he's like, squirrels. I don't know. Yeah. And then she's like, why are you going to shoot squirrels? And he's like, I don't know, because they're fucking gay. Because they're fucking gay. (laughs) And then the most fucking coolest killing squirrel banger comes on. (laughs) And then later on, Karen says, um, what does Ryder Strong say? Ryder Strong says, "Um, hey, I thought we were kissing. And then she says, oh, we were. And then he says, oh, well, like, are we, like, boyfriend, girlfriend now? Or something stupid. And then she goes, don't be gay. Like, there's just, like, a yeah, lot of little... Yeah, it's so weird. Don't say that. Gay things, you know. Which, I don't know. Do you do you catch, like, any, like... And I say catch, like, I guess with all pun intended. Like, do you catch any, like... H like S P D metaphor. I, I feel like, like that. That's what it's about. Like the it movie is. is like it follows at the kind of like, huh? like it kind of has that the idea of it that it's like something that if you go to the cabins and you touch it, you're gonna get it. Yeah. Now you're it's got that. Mark. It's got that like all over it. Huh? Yeah. It's like in your face. It's, totally what it is. Blatant. Okay. So if you have sex, you're gonna get sick. Yeah, you're gonna get sick and your skin's gonna fall off and you are going to die. But not as not like like part. I mean, part two was grosser. Oh, shit, you guys. Yeah. If you think Cabin Fever 1 is bad. Yeah. Watch part you two. You watch part two. And then hold on to your pee-pee. Yep. Ooh. Anyway, Paul and Karen have a moment on this floating dock thingy in the middle of the lake. And they share a cute little kiss. And it reminds me of this fifth grade kiss that I had with oh, uh, like Becky it. Zara. And it was the cutest little thing. Um, I like Jordan's Becky. I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is that Becky's, five-year-old you, Becky. Becky I'm coming for you. Doesn't even remember this. I promise you. Like I could call her right now and tell her about this, and she'd be like, "I don't remember this." And then, yeah, no. Please don't say my name on your podcast. Exactly. She's gonna be like, "Edit that out." I love Becky. <laughs> the coolest. Shout out to Becky. Uh, we love you, Becky. Thanks for prepping him for me. Yeah, she. <laughs> she's literally like, I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. Um. So, but I do like the scene a lot, though. It's cute. Like, it works for the character development, right? Like, I... Yeah, it, it does. It does. It's it, gross. You're so funny. A movie like this doesn't need one. Like, it's just, it was just, like, it's the perfect moment for the cast that was casted, because you expect that whole Dawson's Creek. Uh, yeah, and this movie, at, at this time, th- these kind of movies had those mm-hmm. casts. You had James Vanderbeek. You yep. had Katie Holmes being cast in these movies. Was this his breakout? Um, Paul's, what's his name? Is it? Ryder Strong. Ryder Strong. I think yeah. it was. As I think movie. this was his his breakout from role. ABC. From ABC. Yeah, yeah, so this was Sean growing up. I don't know if he did much afterward. I know he did something else. Called, I think it was called Borderlands or something Did anybody like that. do anything? Topanga, I know she was like on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> I know that she does a podcast now with him. I know that You're her kidding. and Ryder Strong and the brother, uh, Will Friedel, do a podcast together. But, I mean, I fucking loved I literally would it, that, that was my Friday. Mm-hmm. TGIS. If you weren't watching that bit, TGIS, get some yeah. pizza in your hand and some Doritos. Yeah, we would go to my grandma's every weekend. My cousin Christopher, my cousin Ryan, my brother and my sister. And it was TGIF and then Snick. Yeah. And it was, you know, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Um, yeah. All that. Boy Meets World, baby. <laughs> okay. Um... What was I going to say? Okay, so Bert plays in the woods more and shoots at squirrels and eventually shoots the man from the beginning of the movie, who is played by Ari Verveen. Um, And he claims to be sick and in need of help. And it's true. He looks like fucking shit. Yeah, but I don't know why I remember the first time I watched this movie. I remember this scene between them more intense. Like, don't back back away, man. Like, please don't touch me. Like, it was more intense, and this time it was more comedic. Oh, okay. That's where we're going to b- differ, because I was, like, on the edge of my seat really? last night. And last night was the second time this week that I've watched it. Yeah, I just felt like it was just funnier. Th- yeah, I just don't think it's funny at all. Like, he's, like, grabbing at himself, and, like, he sees the cabin. I didn't even notice this time that he, like, saw the cabin. And, again, the music here. Like, Nathan Barr really amps up the tension. I think there's, like, a bunch of it here especially when the guy is like hey is that your cabin I yeah I just, I just felt like the interaction between both of them i can't hear your mic what's going on here hello, hello? is this thing on oh there you are is this thing on <laughs> <laughs> okay sorry um i just feel like the interaction between these two during this this you, you know while watching this movie again it was just so hilarious to me like the way they were both going back and forth with each other and the way that he mentioned, like, is that your cabin? Is that your cabin? It was like, don't come any further. Just step back. Step back. Like the nervous laughter between. I mean, it was just like a nervous laughter. Oh. 
I thought it was so spooky. I don't know. Yeah. And I, maybe it's just like the actor. I feel like that that actor was probably super method. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like he smelled. Yeah. He probably kept away from the other people. You like a hermit. Yeah. I think he probably took his role real serious. Mm -hmm. So Bert is chastised by Marcy and Jeff uh, because he had started a fire before leaving the site. And they ask him why he was shooting the gun. He lies and says he was shooting at squirrels. You know, those gay squirrels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh later or i'm sorry later they're sitting around outside uh they have made a fire and paul tells the story about an event that happened at a bowling alley from his childhood <laughs> um alex great story what <laughs> what is this great story well i can tell you guys the story if you want if everybody wants to gather around sit around the campfire <laughs> yeah, no so there's this bowling alley named lenny maids brighton bowl that's the town that they're in right right on the one, the one in Bratton. Bratton. <laughs> Bratton Bowl. <Bowell. laughs> okay, so when Paul was a child, he asked his dad if he can, if they can go. Dad said no. The bowling alley is closed. Well, it turns out that there had been a break in, at, and all the employees were held at gunpoint. And then after gagged and beaten. Wait, wait. They, oh, they got gagged and beaten. Yeah, they were tied to chairs. <laughs> the chairs were in a circle so that they, they can all face each other. Okay. Um, everyone was forced to watch everybody, of course. And the the sick maniac, he goes and finds one of those little ball peen hammers one by one smash the backs of their heads open with a hammer everyone had to watch their friends die knowing that soon they'd be next oh guy doesn't God. stop there he goes and breaks the fire axes alarms and goes the, the alarms go off he doesn't even give a shit they're just going on he doesn't care at this point he just hacks all of their limbs off the cops uh come in and they find all the six bloody torsos tied to the uh, <laughs> bowling seats blood everywhere turns out the guy was some kind of disgruntled employee jeff asks paul to tell him you know the other part that he's leaving out paul proceeds to say that that was his childhood playground <laughs> <laughs> yeah um oh, and then he proceeds to tell him about the guy with the you know that would give him the shoes and the, the quarters which is yeah. played by eli's brother okay the smiling guy which um well yeah this nasty guy just bowled all of their limbs um into the bowling alley and they found that guy's smiling face at the end still smiling oh in in the um in the ball return yes in right. the ball return Ugh. so that was a, that was a, probably the, the creepiest story and the smile just killed it it was ugh, something so okay good. so now do you think that because they they kind of make it sound like it wasn't real like because it yeah. starts laughing. And like an urban it, legend. And it kind of looks like the girls were being told this story as kind of a joke. Do you think that it was something that happened? I I think so, but I think it's more like an urban legend now where it just got told so much that once you hear it, it's just yeah. a version of oh, the story. Uh, shameless self-plug. Go listen to our urban legend <laughs> episode from last week. Then listen to this one. And then listen to this one. And tell your friends. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this whole set piece is really good. It's gory, it's over the top, and it doesn't belong in this movie, but yeah. it really fucking works. And it extended the movie. It it did. It it adds an extra few minutes and a, mm -hmm. a couple fun little layers. Also, I didn't know that that was Eli Eli Roth's brother. I thought it was That's Eli Roth. Adam. Yeah, yeah. I always thought it was Eli Roth. They look exactly alike, but yeah. even the other brother does. The I other... wonder if they're twins. Could be possibly. Could be. Um, and that. Was my childhood playground line always makes me laugh. Yeah. It's so stupid. Childhood playground. Speaking of Eli Roth, they are interrupted by a drifter named Grim, played by Eli Roth, and his dog, Dr. Mambo, played by a dog named Rocky, <laughs> in case anybody cares. Yeah. I don't know why his character here is so hot. Uh, he is kind of hot, <laughs> huh? hot. Yeah, he's super hot. He gets them really stoned, and Karen mentions how she spent a week in Berkeley fucked up on nothing but beer. So Bert and Jeff make a deal that they will do the same thing for the remainder of their trip. We, I am so glad that I didn't go to college. I know, really. Like, this shit sounds like it's it makes perfect sense for these kinds of people. But oh, like, I, we, were, we were actually around the university today, and we felt the vibe of, yeah, who's the killer? Yeah, all, all we were doing, like, was, that guy's the killer. He's definitely the killer. That guy's the killer. Why? Oh, she didn't get the promotion. No, nope, she didn't get, she's mad. this Starbucks. Who oh, played this killer song? Oh, it was a lot of fun. So a storm suddenly starts to appear, so Grim leaves back to his campsite, but says he might return. I wanted to mention the... Dr. Mumbo. The, the dialogue here, because... I remember even back in 2003 ish when, when I first saw this, that I kind of thought that this was like trashy dialogue. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of was like, you oh, know, these, these, why people, am I watching this? These people don't gross. exist. Like people like Bert don't exist and nobody would hang out with a Bert in real mm -hmm. life. And then 
as the years have kind of gone by, like the, the, the dialogue doesn't bother me as much. Movies like the Halloween remake and Halloween 2 and Rob Zombie movies with those kind of dialogue, that kind of trash dialogue, that stuff bothers me now. But this is not so bad. Like, I kind of like the way that this movie plays out verbally now. It it, it feels more realistic and maybe it's because I'm an adult now. Anyway, the group go inside and wait for the potential return of Grimm and tell sex stories. Ooh. Yeah, they tell that story Bad about story. Karen and her uh, pulsating shower head. Yeah. And Bert getting his balls licked by his dog. I mean, that's, that's a story. Nobody would hang out with this fucking guy, dude. Would lick my balls. Nobody. He put peanut butter on him. Yeah. Gross. I, ugh. <laughs> so there's a knock at the cabin door. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they think it's Grim, but it's the Reaper. <laughs> Don't feel the Reaper. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm caffeinated. But it's the stranger that Bert actually shot in the woods. His skin has begun to eat itself. Oh, he's asking for a doctor. Jeff seems yeah. like he wants to help at first and asks Marcy to grab him a blanket. When the man recognizes Bert as the one who shot him, Bert slams the door in his face and refuses to help him. The hilarious. Man, no. It's hilarious. No, it's he's, like, oh, he's not going to come in here and touch all your shit. You want to come in here and touch your soap? <laughs> That's horrifying. It's hilarious. No. But yes, uh, yeah. The moment is so tense in there. Like you can literally feel the stress of what is about to happen to these folks. Yeah, because everybody doesn't understand why they can't help him. And the only one who knows that answer is Bert. And yeah. it's because he's a piece of shit i think we've all been in one of those trips where something just goes dark and wrong and it's like oh man where you ruined. accidentally shoot a homeless person in the woods yeah, and i think it's a squirrel dead. okay i keep forgetting that we did not grow up in bacoima like i did and we because didn't go camping at the hoover <laughs> dam yeah <laughs> hansen dam um, hoover oh, dams is about it oh shit okay <laughs> i try to insult you sorry bacoima and then i our and water level geographically is an idiot so okay so the man breaks into jeff's car and begins to contaminate everything and by doing so he pukes all over yeah. the fucking interior there's blood everywhere and i never understood why they all come up and fuck up the car um well they're trying to get him out well yeah but they're like fucking up the car well they <laughs> they can't get him out they're yeah. trying to scare like a berry i guess you're like yeah. banging harder they're whatever. trying to scare him so they're shooting yeah. at the tires they're breaking the windows they're trying mm -hmm. to get this motherfucker out of the car and result they destroy the car somehow they light the sky on fire yeah like marcy is trying to spray him away from her and karen with a bottle of hairspray i think it is yep. and then um um uh, paul uh, picks up a log of fire yeah from the wood and uh, from the wood from the uh, log of wood from the fire and it it basically and this is where the difference between both the remake and the original come to play because in the in the original i think everybody has a part to do oh in the in the old one everybody has a part to do with how this guy is lit on fire and in the remake only one of them lights him on fire but yeah. this one is like a whole team effort of how this guy like they're poking him with stairs get, get away from us one of them throws yeah. like gas at him the other one lights him up you know in the in the remake it's just one guy that grabs a stick of fire out of the fire and lights him up in the in the original it's very chaotic there's so yeah. much happening it's like that would happen that would actually happen proper scenario and, yeah scenario and like you said everybody played uh -huh. like some part in it Ugh. i just wish the remake never happened really we didn't need it no honestly uh, so the character of the homeless man, he or the hermit, rather, he runs off into the woods and it's like such a, a really it's a really creepy image watching him run off into the woods. The group run uh, the group run. They go back into the, the the group, go back inside the cabin and try to make sense of what happened and decide what to do. The montage of everyone and what they're thinking of and the diseased man and the cast looking out the windows and stuff is pretty chilling. And again, the music is what makes mm -hmm. all of this really work so well. Jeff and Bert and Marcy go for help. Marcy going her own way. Paul and Karen stay back and Karen cries to Paul about what happened the night before. Uh, we should mention that Karen is drinking a glass of water Ew. that has a tooth inside of it. And at this point, we, the audience, are aware that the reservoir has been infected by mm -hmm. the corpse of the burning man who apparently fell into the water the night before. Did any of that make sense? <laughs> uh, no, it what doesn't. Said? It doesn't make sense. Really? Yeah. Wait. Because the burning guy is found later, like at the end of the movie, and he's still like intact. And when 
Paul, at like almost close to the end of the movie, falls into the water. He falls into a a corpse that's already wait. What been... do you mean the Burning Man is found later intact? Yeah, like at the end of the movie, the camera follows the water, like the pipe again, and it leads it to the guy that they burned. And yeah. they, flip, they flip him over, and like his face is still like perfectly intact. But when Paul falls into the water, the guy that he falls into is like a whole other body. Are you sure? Yeah, like his body is like this body's already been decomposed and that might just be a continuity error then because i think it's supposed to be the same guy really yeah i'm pretty sure because then it's like if the water got contaminated when this guy died then why would this why was this guy contaminated then this guy was contaminated because the dog blood that shot in his face so how did the dog get contaminated the dog got contaminated probably because of the water because he drank the water because there had already been a dead body in it no because there's just it we didn't get a prequel oh Okay. I don't know, but <laughs> we can only assume otherwise. And let, you know what? I don't know. You could very well be right. Yeah, I'm telling you, because the one th one of them was perfectly intact. The other was grabbing the remote. <laughs> oh, he's going to, he's going to, he's going <laughs> to rewind and fast forward. And no, we're actually not there yet, but. Okay. So the sound design here also is um, with the flies is a, a, another good example of the sound design. Yeah. The next scene here, I think, is another favorite of both of ours. It's with the woman butcher. Oh, the oh, lady is my favorite. Christine Renee Ward. Mm -hmm. When she rips the pig open and then starts beating the body of the dead pig and she's yeah. screaming obscenities. And uh, her scene is just she owned it. Yeah, I think she's the MVP of the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, Honestly. Jeff and Paul stumble upon her, and when she offers them a radio to call a mechanic, they realize that she has photos of the hermit, who is actually named Henry. Her cousin. And it's her cousin. So upon realizing this, they make a quick exit, and... Yeah. This is the scene from, um, I Know What You Did Last Summer with... Oh, you're right, with Anne Heche. Anne Heche. Oh, 100%. Rest in peace, Anne Heche. Yes. Marcy makes it to the other side of the lake via canoe. That's what I was going to say. I just hit you and I'm so no, sorry. The cardio, I, hit I still know what you did last summer. So we were talking about VHS movies and I at out of the closet. We went to out of the closet oh. and I was going to buy. I still know what you did last yes. summer and I didn't buy it because. Why didn't you grab it? I didn't buy it because um there was no reason for me to buy it because I don't like that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was as it was as simple as that. Okay, we need to go get it. It was literally as simple as that. And I um people like that movie and I like the Rage Carry too. Mm -hmm. And people will stand behind I still know either the I mean, for as being like a better sequel or something like that. I think that's where I was going with that. Yeah. I didn't mean to hit you so no, hard. No, I'm so was, sorry. I, guys, I literally I was like, just like yeah. so oh. I felt like I'm oh, a lot man, I can handle it. Okay. Oh I guess I'm a little bitch. You wanna try it again? Uh, no. <laughs> I don't, maybe there was more to it than that. I'm going to have to okay. go back and listen to the episode and Fine. then figure out what there was. Cause there was more of oh, that you were going to say okay. something that about, I still know. And the rage carry to the two VHSs. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with us guys. Thanks yeah, for fucking really, listening to this honestly. scattered ass shit. This is what happens when I have caffeine afternoon. Did we confuse you all yet? <laughs> Already, already. You, confuse, you confuse we're all confused <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> now that i don't know where we are on the plot marcy makes it to the other the, 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 marcy makes it to the other side of the lake via canoe we get a strikingly similar and i think purposeful a texas chainsaw massacre shot as she approaches an empty house and searches it and yo serena vincent is beautiful and she was like a Miss Teen Beauty pageant winner in like 1996, I think. Really? Yeah, I think so. Uh, Bert scares her. What? What did you say? No, I said that. That's when it was big, huh? Yeah, yeah. She's really pretty. An officer shows up at the cabin, played by Giuseppe Andrews. Paul explains to him what happened, but as he's doing so, the officer is more interested in the fact that there was a party of sorts. He ignores the blood completely. Says he's going to make a report. Okay, so I guess now that I'm, like, reading this, this is where the comedy is, right? Like, yeah. every review I've read, like mm -hmm. I said, in every website calls this movie half a comedy. And I had never seen it in the past, and I guess to a degree, this is where it comes into play? Yeah. Um, dependent on your comedy level, I guess. Some can accept it, and some can just pass it up. But, you know, if you slap a suspenseful track behind this, yeah, it would not be funny. Exactly. 
Yes. It would be like just mm-hmm. David Lynchy. Yep. You know, it would be very surreal and it would be just like, this is fucking weird. Yeah. Like, this these music people are the role. seeing something super nightmarish right now. It would mm-hmm. be very skin of a rinky dinky dink. Yeah, because I would be like, don't tell that cop anything. Don't tell him anything. Like, yeah, no, like, like, don't trust him. Don't tell him anything. Okay, and you know what? <laughs> now that I just broke that down, I think that is something that the fucking ugly, stupid remake did do better. Yes, that In they that took out the sense. comedic part. Mm-hmm. With that character mm-hmm. only. I'm going to give it that merit. Okay. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that we're talking about this. Um. So Bert and Paul cleaned the car. While they discuss Paul and Karen's weird best friend relationship, Dr. Mambo, Grim's dog, comes out of the woodwork and starts growling and acting super aggressive. Marcy scares him off with a shotgun. She's a badass. She really is. I think Marcy is probably my favorite of the group. Yeah, she could have been the final girl. I remember instead when... Instead of Paul. Yeah. <laughs> little, little Paulina. Yeah. Um, I remember when I was younger really liking Karen, but mm-hmm. now I realize that Karen... Is the movie. Is prop what Come on, is the movie i mean like she's like the face of the film i suppose yeah. but she's not really a great character she no no really. much to do except like you know decompose in the shed her voice is a little annoying um yeah she's just not that you know she's not given a lot to do at mm-hmm. the end of the day so the group conspire in the cabin karen retires to a nap and marcy takes a bath and We should note that at this point, we do know that Bert and Jeff are drinking beer only, so they are not infected, as far as we know. (laughs) This is us during the pandemic. Yes. This is super COVID-y. That's another note that I had taken. This all reminds me very much of quarantine. Um, Marcy and Karen have been exposed through the water, though, because I think we see that Marcy is drinking, like, a cup of tea. And Mm -hmm. uh, Karen has been downing water like it's no tomorrow. And Paul, too, yeah. I think, right? I think Paul has also been drinking water. Yes. So well, yeah, Paul, because when he got bit from Dennis. Oh, yeah. And then he went and is... wash his hands in the creek. That's right. Oh, and you're convinced that there's already a dead body in the water. I'm telling you, because okay. since the beginning of the movie, before the guy even died, before what's-his-name shot him and died in the water. Well, I'm not going back infected. to watch this. You're going to so... be, and you're going to see that I'm right. That okay, there had already cool. been a dead body in that water. I want everyone else to correct me, because I'm not going to allow It's when Paul to. walks in. I mean, when Paul falls in the water. I'm going to let you just have your moment here. Or maybe this is because we watched the director's cut. Oh. Maybe it's not in the actual original one. Well, who knows? We'll get there. Okay. <laughs> So the dog is literally watching them outside as Bert tries to fix the car. And I think that this is actually really scary. And this is the first time watching this movie that I've noticed in in some scenes and this one particularly, it just slowly, but also it transitions into the next scene. It fades off into black. Mm -hmm. It does this weird, like just it's like these little sequences that they do. And there's this, they're the scariest thing in the whole entire movie when they they do like these flashes of of like scary dream sequences, but it's stuff that it's happening to them already or that's going to happen in the movie. Yeah, I never caught those, but it's the way they're transitioning to the next scene that's going to happen in the movie. But they do these flashes of just dreams, it's just like the sickest thing. So the next scene that we're going to talk about is probably the most famous scene in the movie. And it's where Paul and Karen are napping together. And Paul takes this moment to finger fuck Karen. Disgusting. And as much as I want to take this part, you know, Alex, I I mean, do you want me to have it? I can do it. Okay. (laughs) Well, while Paul Paul goes in to check on Karen to find her sleeping... They have a little flirty moment as he extends his arm to give her a glass of water because she needs it. Um, He climbs into the bed with her. Then he spoons her. Then they fall asleep. Sure enough, as Paul is a Gemini that can't cuddle without a grope or two. (laughs) He caresses her skin down to her pelvic area as he proceeds to finger her. He stares at her as he, uh, you know, in all honesty, it's a very sweet moment between both of them because the music actually changes into nice mellow, like. This is the Angela Baldabalente. This is his musical moment. He he composed this and it's so beautiful. It is a really well shot scene. Yeah, it's really gross. Paul then starts um, realizing that his hand's a little wet, pulls out his hand, notices clotty blood all over his fingers, which is the grossest thing ever. (laughs) Yeah, a little wet, which is funny because it's he's like right on her leg. He's a virgin, I guess. He then runs to the bathroom and screams for Marcy. Everyone comes running in and basically puts this bitch out the outhouse, like we said. 
Dude, and, like, I mean, that, yeah. Like, like, it was just the bunkhouse outside. But they like, just... just to like go back a second. I mean, I have some questions. Like, go ahead. First off, she has to be in like excruciating pain because he's not. He's yeah. not inserting his finger. I mean, I'm not a. No, woman. I don't know what it's like. To Her flesh had already been have like have fingers inside my vagina, <laughs> but he is. He's inserting his fingers into open yeah. wounds in her thigh. Yeah. That's what I'm gathering. I mean, alone, like, if I took my finger and just rubbed it on your skin, it would just feel like friction. I mean, but if you have an open wound in, yeah. wound in your thigh that you... The salt on your hand, pain. on your sweat, is going to affect that wound right away. So, and then there's also his face, and he looks... And you had mentioned this last night. He looks like he's, like, so, like, into it because he's, like, taking care of her. Yeah, he's like, he like, looks like he's, like, doing such a good job and he's, like, taking care of his partner and he's yeah, doing it right. And it's, like, it's kind of a sweet moment, you know. Bro, you're inside her leg. But he's literally fingering her her open wounds yeah. you know, her thigh. And yeah. it's, it's really fucking terrifying. And this is every guy's worst nightmare, mm -hmm. you know. And then there's a moment in Cabin fever patient zero that kind of tops this i'm not gonna spoil it for anybody but oh holy yeah. shit but this is i remember in the theaters everybody just fucking lost it yeah we lost it and the girl that i was with i remember she lost it i lost it we all just lost it Ooh, gross and this is the part in the movie where we realize that karen is much sicker than we realized where'd you watch it portland portland wasn't pumping out babies back then because of this movie <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah no this was everybody this got was, scared you know, again going back to the whole metaphor the of condom like, industry grew uh-huh you had <laughs> sex you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get open wounds yeah. on your legs and you're gonna die um and it's kind of sad you know yeah like, you know the the part where she's like don't leave me I, yeah even now that that's kind of a it, it's just horrific but see, all these scenario. all these parts were in part two but done differently and, and they were scarier in part two like the pool the pool scene reminds me of the marcy scene Oh, the pool scene, I feel like, is a little... He's like, are you on your period, remember? And then they keep going. And see, that part's just gross. Yeah. I think I think part two, there's just, like, a lot of shock. And then this stuff. Karen part, to me, is, like, when the girl's in the locker room and she's, like, screaming at her and she's following her. It's the scariest thing ever just to witness this girl screaming at this other girl chasing her. And she's like, get away from me! Oh, again, like, there's so much stuff in the sequel that's just, like, yeah. right there for shock value, but... Again, guys, watch the sequel. Yeah. Watch the sequel and let us know what you think because it's it's such a good companion piece mm -hmm. to this. And it takes place in a prom. Yeah, and, and it has the same soundtrack to Prom Night, ironically enough. Super cool. So yeah, Bert loses his shit. He's calling her the worst fucking names and they lock her in the room and they all basically start checking each other, uh, each other's bodies for, for marks and for flesh virus-y type of symptoms you know and it's it's horrific everybody's basically yeah. starting to turn on each other at this point and you feel the serious now the seriousness now in the movie like yeah this is real yeah and this is where like the paranoia starts to spike mm -hmm. up the movie is really taking a turn at this point so watching them leave the cabin and then just like wait and then karen walk out after them and like you said they take her to what you think yeah. is an outhouse <laughs> um, but it's a shed they take her shed. Shed. <laughs> there's no better uh -huh. you know it's not like a fucking guest house they take this girl to a fucking shed um how does that look like they leave somebody outside I mean, like, your uh, friend yeah like, this is put her in the car <laughs> and this is 20 years ago this is before iphones this is before you know a lot of like technological advances that we have now they have put the, they're putting this girl in the shed in the cold in the middle of the forest mm -hmm. uh with like some cigarettes and a small mattress like a cot yeah and it's inhumane. And they're treating her like the dog that's about to eat her. Like Mambo's still out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's, job. that's what we're here for. So, yeah. Um, this movie is super current, you know, yeah. when, you, when you think about it. And that's what I meant by COVID. Like, this is... The, do the dog trying to get to her is just scary enough alone, like, by on its own. It's it's a, such a scary scene to see him, like, scratching underneath the door trying to get to her. And you're like, you know, she's in there incapable. And it's like, this dog is going to get to her. Yeah, the dog stuff is really scary. They execute that stuff really well. Mm -hmm. And then she is given lines like, I want to go home. And yeah, and you can hear her through the shed just whimpering these lines out. Ugh. And she's, like, wheezing. <laughs> and she's just getting more sick and more sick. And they kind of make it sound like, or they make you feel like, rather, that this is stretching on for days and days and days. But really, this is only over the course of, like, two or three days. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of interesting, too. I never really realized that fully until this last viewing. So Paul goes on the hunt for help. Marcy goes to the shed later to give Karen food. And there's this shot where her burning cigarette in the dark. Yeah. 
is like just, her face changed she looks possessed it's just by happening the, so fast i think the wendigo got to her oh god what a go eight hey, pet cemetery yeah pet, oh, <laughs> which is also oh. a thanksgiving movie yeah i think yeah. and how about are you excited for oh bloodlines Sorry. oh yeah that's being released on um on digital copy yeah, yeah congratulations to them. it got so many views off of paramount plus it's that it's really literally getting day. releasing digital print well, that's coming out mid-december i think december 19th though la, la, la. so nice. that's gonna be um in my stocking apparently yeah it will be um no i know oh thank you okay <laughs> <laughs> let me check amazon's orders um so paul almost gets shot by an angry man after trying to ask for help Jeff is becoming a prima donna uh, germaphobe, and <laughs> Jeff Jeff is becoming a prima donna germaphobe, and everyone is hating him, myself included. Yeah, tensions are at an all time high. The dog is scratching at the shed, like we'd already talked about, and Bert scares the dog off with a shotgun. Yeah, and all this those little dream sequences are just flashing throughout. <laughs> yeah, full intensity. It's like kind of like referential to The Exorcist because yeah. there's like those weird flashes of the demon and the Pazazu mm -hmm. and all that stuff in The Exorcist. That's what this kind of reminded me of. Which has nothing to do with how the water got infected anyway. It's just flashes of what's happening to them, period. Yeah, it's it's interesting filmmaking yeah. what they chose to do because it's it good. doesn't it, it's really good, but mm -hmm. it, it doesn't you don't think while you're watching it that it works. But yeah, it, it's again, it's just something that fits well. It's like I'm still confused at the end, but I was so satisfied. Yeah. Yeah. This is it's 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 a good movie, guys. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's really grim too. So mm -hmm. you, you know, grim. Oh yeah, right. I guess um, that's why it's a, it's a, it's like the best word that I can describe for it. It's very grim. It's dark, and it goes to some really fucked up places. Oh, you know, there was a review that someone had posted that I wanted to read, and because you know this movie's not very divisive, a lot of people really like it. But there was one review that I had found that was worth mentioning because this person just fucking hated it, <laughs> and I didn't understand why. And so someone had said, I'm not going to name this person's name because they're not worth mentioning. But this person said, yeah, it was bad, but like Instagram ad bad. You have no idea or clue which wrong path it will turn down. So you have to watch to find out what the writers will mess up next. Is someone going to die or get laid? Will a random character emerge from the woods? Perhaps someone will explode into a pile of guts? So, so much gore, and that's coming from a person who loves to see the interesting ways writers torment the characters. I'm not weird, I promise. But there was so much fake blood and screaming that it seemed that the writers knew their script sucked and were trying to cover it up with as much red makeup as possible. Plus one star for the cool set's locations. Has this guy seen part two? <laughs> Has this guy seen a horror movie? This part two is even worse. Has so, guy, there, is it has even more blood and a lot more screaming. And the girl is annoying scream, but it's such a good fucking movie. Is this written by Welcome to Primetime, bitch? <laughs> no, fuck like, you. Get the fuck out of here. Like, it's just so funny that like, people yeah. don't understand what they're watching. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Bert gets the Jeep started the next morning. He realizes he's infected. I mean, everybody is essentially going to get infected. Mm -hmm. He lost the beer bet the night before, though, and drank water. This is when you feel it, because he was the one that was taking care of Oz and the most. Like, no, don't let him come in here. No, don't touch him. No, don't touch her. No, don't. <laughs> nothing. And he gets sick. Yeah. So you kind of are like, I mean, as much as I hate Bert, like, mm -hmm. you're kind of rooting for Bert because somehow he's becoming the void or he has been the mm -hmm. voice of reason. And he has that like ability now be yeah. and you want him to survive. Once he gets sick, you, you now get vulnerable and you're like, shit, everybody's going to get it. Yeah. They and you already know escape. that Karen's not going to live. You already know that judging by the way it's going, that Marcy and mm -hmm. uh, Jeff are probably not going to live, but you, you don't know quite how yeah. it's going to go with Paul and Bert. And like you through the whole film, like. Karen is just like disintegrating in front of us. And she's the only character that's literally prolonging this death inside of her. And like everybody else is just going about this insanity. And her is just like just slowly just dying there, like over in, in the shed. Yeah. So Jeff and Marcy moved Karen from the shed to the Jeep, only for her to puke blood all over it and contaminate it again. Jeff refuses to get in, and the others see that Bert is also sick too. So Bert speeds off, leaving them behind. I'm going to find a doctor. Yeah. Jeff steals the beer and runs off into the woods, leaving Marcy and Paul to fend for themselves. Marcy compares the situation to a plane going down. So apparently 
there was this audition for this Marcy character took place on the morning of 9-11. And this dialogue was the dialogue that oh, this character was given. Yeah, because it was a very like weird thing to bring up. Like, why would you think of that specific moment for this? Yeah, it's such a very it's a strange analogy, but I also think that's very chilling mm -hmm. if that's true. And I don't know if that's true. That's something that I read on IMDb trivia, so it could very well be made up. It kind of sounds legit. Yeah, but I don't know if it is true. It's it's very chilling. So Marcy and Paul fuck it out. Paul suggests safe sex, but Marcy declines. Going back to if you have unsafe sex, you will die. Mm -hmm. This is a horror movie. Yep. Um, the fingerprints on her back while they're fucking. Yeah. Oh my god. Nobody notices them but us. Yeah. So Paul washes his dick off with Listerine, and you can literally hear his like flesh sizzling. <laughs> it's it, it's mm -hmm. awful. Bert goes back to the mini mart. And he either has a full-on hallucination with the pancakes thing, or we're not sure, but Dennis, the feral child from earlier, he bites Bert and subsequently becomes infected. The store owner threatens Bert and gets his <laughs> friends to go after everyone in the woods to avenge him, affecting his son. So this is, this is an interesting part of the conversation, because we talked about this last night, if this part was a hallucination. The Dennis Karate Chop thing? Yeah. Like, when he's screaming, pancakes, pancakes. Like, do you think that he's hallucinating? I believe so now at this point. I think that he's hallucinating. Because wasn't there a rabbit tour? Am I tripping? Was that I think that rabbit? there's a rabbit. No, that was the, that was at the, the hospital at the end. No, was it? it is in part. Oh. You're right. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I think there's a um a rabbit. At now we're hallucinating. Table. Um, But this character is too fucking much. Yeah. And like, this also reminds me of, like... Just <laughs> fucking. I don't know. Bullshit. Like we didn't need the Dennis part, but I mean, oh, we it totally was there's, needed the Dennis there's, part. There's, we there's needed great. the Dennis part. This stuff is like fucking iconic. Yeah. Paul leaves. Pancakes. Yeah, the pancakes. And then in the remake, they named the dog at the beginning Pancakes. Yeah, I don't know if you caught that. Yeah. Paul leaves Marcy to go find Bert and Jeff. Marcy takes a bath, and we see that her back is beginning to rot away. The boils of pus. Yeah. The effects are outstanding here. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the, these are real, real, real effects. Just so everybody knows. Yes. Um, And we like them. It looks so gross. Yeah, they're fucking badass. Paul comes across the reservoir and finds the rotted corpse of the burnt man or some other body, I guess, according to you. Uh, He falls in. He's now infected. and he re Or if he wasn't before. He realizes the water is the reservoir and runs back to the cabin. Or he, re I'm sorry, he realizes that the water is coming from the reservoir and runs back to the cabin to alert the others. Elsewhere, Bert is still running for his life from the rednecks who are shooting at him. And he's leaving trails of his skin on trees and stuff. And it's fucking disgusting. Yeah. So back to Marcy and the most iconic scene of the movie, actually. And she begins to shave her legs. And as she starts to shave her legs, what happens? Alex? She's shaving layers of skin off that are coming off as she's shaving with every single stroke. Oh, and you hear it and you see it. Yeah. And, and like she has a shaving cream over every like meat part of the body that's like coming off. The meat's coming off her skin. It's it's actually one of the worst things I've ever seen. Totally cringe. It's so bad. And, uh, you know, it's something that that holds up. Yeah. Like, this is an effects moment that holds up so, so I really love well. it because it would happen. It's like, bitch, why are you shaving your legs, period? You I just had sex. She's, I think that she's probably sad that she just had meaningless sex with somebody that she didn't love. I think it's mm -hmm. probably a lot more deep-rooted. Oh, I then get it. the fact yeah. that she's probably going to die in this cabin. Yeah, um, I think it's one of those getting ready for death. Type yeah, type you of know, things. why not shave your fucking leg? Yeah, exactly. Go out with a banger. Um, but it, that's not it, though. Marcy is then tore apart by Grimm's dog. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, I think that some of this scene is done better ish <laughs> in the remake. Yeah. So Paul finds Marcy's body parts and then sees that Dr. Mambo has gotten to Karen. It's he, gross. It's There's bad. like legs and like a foot with the yeah. candle still on it. Oh, oh, you mean of Marcy? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what I mean. He finds her body parts. Paul is then forced to put Karen out of her misery with a shovel. And it's pretty fucking grisly. Mm -hmm. And, um... Bert makes his way back to the cabin. The rednecks descend upon him. They blow Bert's head off, and then Paul massacres all of them. 
Paul runs off screaming for Jeff if he's out there not to drink the water. I'm not sure why all this is hitting so differently after all these years. What about you? Yeah. No, I'm telling you that now that I watched it, I actually like it better. That's the same no. character. No, it's not. It's wearing the same clothes. Wait till the end of the movie. <laughs> and then you'll see what I mean. Because right now they show this guy. And then later at the end of the movie, you'll see the pipe follows it again. And then the guy's at the edge of the, like at the bank of the water and he's facing up. Nobody's, nobody spins that's him open. His, that's his character. Whose character? That's Ryder Strong's character at the end of the movie. No. Yeah. That's how the sequel starts. Oh my gosh, you're so right. So <laughs> now that you mentioned the sequel, because I was like, wait, like, <laughs> that's not even true. So as I was saying, um, Paul runs off screaming for Jeff if he's out there not to drink the water. And uh, wait, so I had asked, does this movie after after however, however many times you've seen this movie, does it hit you differently as someone who's in your early 40s? Yes, because when I watched it first, I was watching it for the teen, the, you know, like being attracted to Bert. And then now that I'm watching it, I'm watching it like an adult. <laughs> I love that's why when you watched it for Bert. <laughs> well, not, not, you know, because it's just another teen horror movie. Of course, they're yeah, kind of a hot cast. And, for the hot definitely. cast and for like the blood. And... Yeah, exactly. As a teen. So now as an adult, you kind of place yourself in the situation, you know, in these situations. Yeah. Or haven't have, have gone through these, you know. Things like this, but not so intense like the movie. Like, I watch this okay. now, and all I can think about is, oh my god, like, my armpit is rotting yeah. away, so I totally get what's happening right now. It's that shaving scene really fucked you up. Yeah, like, do we have a, a strong enough Neosporin to handle this? And I think back how vulnerable we must have been to where, don't drink the water, it is in the water after watching this film, or don't shave your leg if you have a cut. <laughs> it's just so insane how real paranoia is, and how real group hysteria is. Well, group hysteria, yeah, because they all turn against each other yeah yeah and they really do mm -hmm. they really like this this group of friends really really turn on each other yeah. and that ultimately is also very frightening like they fuck each other's yeah. friends like you know, they don't trust no more like, and then they like kind of kill each other yeah like maybe not with their own hands but they are all responsible for killing each other they kill yeah. karen they kill karen they kill karen dude and, for your son, and she knew that they were killing her they weren't doing shit to help i mean her. it's fucked up paul has to kill Karen because he's putting her out of her misery. But they, like, I mean, everybody could have handled this a lot differently yeah. at the end of the day. So it was made to piss us off in that way. Maybe. Yeah, no. it's it is infuriating, infuriating. At this point, everything is just going wrong for Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so he enters a cave. He finds uh, Grim Eli Roth disemboweled. He the then gross a scene. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Mm -hmm. There's like guts and stuff. He finds the Jeep. He hits the deer, which this scene I completely forgot about. I like gasped, um, yelped. It was for the bad. fuck out of you because the way that eye of the deer just comes onto screen. <laughs> yeah, completely horrifying. I totally forgot about it. So there's blood in uh, Paul's face. What else, like I said, could fucking happen? Paul finds Winston at some kumbaya gathering getting drunk with underage kids. We discover that Winston may or may not have actually sent for the tow truck like he said he was going to. Mm -hmm. The sheriff radios in and says that basically there is a, a maniac with a flesh-eating virus. And if... To shoot him as soon as they see him. Yeah. If... um, it, it, What you just said. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. The Kumbaya kids end up smashing guitars over each other's heads and choking on harmonicas and... Paul pukes blood on everyone. The party's over and Paul knocks Winston out and then runs away. He then passes out on the side of the road, ends up at the hospital where he's an incoherent rambling mess talking about burnt marshmallows. This whole last segment reminds me of The Shining. Really? Just like him being wheeled through the hospital and like, oh, yeah, yeah, doors yeah, you, yeah. And yeah. Being like th that's where the money exactly is. You're... The police want nothing to do with him due to his condition. <laughs> So they conspire to have Winston take him somewhere. Back at the cabin land, Jeff crawls out of the bushes in a drunken stupor. Remember Jeff? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, he goes back to the cabin itself and finds the blood and gore. And for a brief moment, you think he's sad, but he's, he's actually sad. over the moon. <laughs> yeah, he's the fucking winner. He gets it all. He is the final girl. You know, he's, he's the one that survived. He gets the million dollars. And that's when he is freaking shot to death. 
like shot down. It was the most intense part of the film, the way that he comes out and he's shouting that he's he he's alive, that he survived. He's survived. so fucking happy. I made it. I made, I made it. it. And then he is plowed down by the fucking SWAT team. Yeah. Plethora of um, bullets. <laughs> a plethora of bullets, man. Thank God too, because Jeff sucked. What yeah. a piece of shit. It was, it, I mean, to watch him die like that was so bad. It was, I mean, like, that's one of those, like, bravo moments, though. Yeah. You're like, thank God, man. Like, some people didn't deserve it. And then uh, Jeff, du- Jeff did. Yeah. Jeff deserved it. And the police take the bodies and light them all on fire. It's very reminiscent of Night of the Living Dead. I love that Eli Roth did his homework. I love the directors that do their homework. You... Uh, like can tell like you catch these little easter eggs that's what i really liked about that hayden newman movie yeah so yeah the police then go to the convenience store where there's a lemonade stand ran by two little kids who lifted the water right from a creek where winston dumped sean i mean Ryder strong just moments ago so yeah <laughs> oh and what else happened alex well, oh <laughs> that whole thing where it cleans up the joke from the beginning where the joke. yeah it kind of cleans it up because i guess it's a joke <laughs> so then we're all sitting out on the porch at the store and then like this group of thugs yeah <laughs> walks they, up they, into they... the country store which is such a weird scene honestly like where did they come from it doesn't make any sense it like, does not make any sense so they walk into the store the out. music changes into something funny and then they clean up the joke from the beginning they which couldn't... makes sense but not acceptable they could have <laughs> left it out yeah um so yeah that's how cabin fever ends and you are left with the idea that the water is infected and everybody is drinking the water and um, that there's probably going to be a sequel. And what do you know? Uh, seven years later, Ty West filmed a sequel uh, that was shelled for two years. And in 2009, we would get Cabin Fever 2, Spring Fever. It's just as good. It's just a different tone. It's just a different kind of film. Yeah. Alex. What did you think of Cabin Fever? I like this movie, and like I said, I, um, the music really creeps me out. So I, I like playing it in the background. Yeah, the music is a big selling point on this. Nathan Barr completely, completely overdid it. And know? I love that. I, you guys just you guys witnessed my mind being blown by the fact that this turned out to be Paul at the end and not... I Henry. was wondering what the hell you were talking about because I was like, so no, I was I'm like, pretty sure. It was kind of like, you know, like I kept asking over and over, like, what happened? It, came, it, it was kind of like watching Trick or Treat to where the movie just comes full circle in the beginning. It's like, okay, so now we're in the beginning again? Like, the, this is how the water gets contaminated? What happened? No, I, I can didn't pay understand. Attention to the character. I can yeah. understand where you could possibly get confused. For a second, even, I was like, wait, do you think that Paul, like, like I just never, like, what happened well, to Paul? What I think that you thought for a second, and my mind was reaching, I thought that you thought Paul lifted Paul's own body out of the water. Like, I don't I was like, am I high right now? Like, I oh, thought that you like, and I was like, no, you're not watching the right movie. I never saw that Paul died. I, okay, yeah, well, technically he didn't, because in, so, in Cabin Fever 2. Yeah, he doesn't die. Exactly. He, he gets so up, yeah. they, they remove his body. They get, the, the police conspire yeah. because the hospital doesn't want to touch him. So yes. they, they're like, you can move him. We don't, we're not touching him. Mm-hmm. So they give the body back to Winston. Yeah. And they make Winston get rid of him. And so Winston pushes him into the, the he's water. He's like, I don't want to kill him. Not realizing that he's going to infect the water and the town's supply of water mm-hmm. into the next film. Yeah, so then that's why at the end of the movie, now he's infecting the water again because these kids go and grab the lemonade jug. You know, they grab the water for the jump, lemonade jug that now they're selling to the town. That's how Cabin Fever ends. And it's just this whole ongoing circle now. And that's that's like how the ends. cycle continues. And that's how we get into the sequel. So don't buy, don't buy lemonade. Don't not from little kids and from little kids in the stand. In Ho Dunk Town, Mm-mm. um North their fundraiser. North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Alex, couple questions. Ask away. Do you think this movie held up? I do think this movie held up. And I, I love part two as well. <laughs> yeah, I think this movie held up completely. I part, really part do. Part two, it's his own um, entity. Honestly, like it, it's a you can watch this shit on your own. I mean, it honestly had nothing to do with it. Just the beginning of how you know the transition between movies. Flesh eating viruses can be mm-hmm. their own genre. Yeah, you know, yeah, really. Like zombie movies are their own genre. Like mm-hmm. Cabin Fever Two, you could have removed Rider Strong. You could have removed the title. And it could have been its own movie. The way that they made Karen look in that cigarette scene where she's outside in the shed that you were talking about earlier, 
She looks scary. She looks possessed. Her eyes look different. She looks dark. She looks mad. It's one of the best shots of the movie. And it's scary because it's like, why is she so angry? Like almost possessed, but it's a skin eating disease. (laughs) Yeah. You know, like it has nothing to do with demonic possessions or the devil or Satan. I think you just want everyone to be possessed. Absolutely. That's my shit. I do. One thing I do love is that all these actors are still working. Mm Mm-hmm. Every single one of them are still working. Like I said, Ryder Strong is still podcasting. And James DeBello worked as recently as 2019. He was in a horror movie called Clinton Road mm-hmm. um, with Lauren Levera from uh, Terrifier Part 2 and uh, Ice-T. And although I probably won't ever watch it, it's based mm-hmm. off of an urban legend about Clinton Road in New Jersey. If you've never heard about that, it's a really spooky story. Um, but again, plug for our urban legend episode. Yay. Yeah, every, everybody's still working. Serena Vincent still does horror movies. Um, I think Joey Kern's a musician. I think every time you do a plug for another podcast, you should do the Carrie. Plug it up. Plug it up. La-dee-da. 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 <laughs> oh, wait, no, I have another question for you. Yes. Did you think that this was gory? <laughs> Probably the goriest of all we've done, of, of all of our podcasts. I mean, so far. Podcasts. Our episodes. <laughs> our episodes. <laughs> Probably the goriest of our podcasts. Podcasts. Is. I believe that this is probably the goriest that we've done. I believe so as well. Yeah. Yeah. This is by far the goriest movie we've covered. In all entirety, like the movie itself from beginning to end. And I have a feeling that this is going to be like Terrifier Part 2 in comparison to what we cover next week. Oh. Um, which we'll get to in just a second. My last question for you is, you um, do you recommend this to people? Yes, I do. And I like I said, I recommended watch it in a group of friends with a group of friends, especially yeah. if you go somewhere else fun to watch this in the cabin itself or like just yeah. in general, because you'll start like getting creeped out and like, you know, the trust between the circle it gets all intense. Yeah, and weird. <laughs> it kind of has it all. It has everything you look for in a horror yeah. movie. It has good suspense. It mm-hmm. has great tension. It has good acting. It's it everything. Has... It has the sex. It has the drinks. It has the everything. Like It's just great. Yeah, it has it has what you look for in a good horror mm-hmm. movie. Eli Roth really really brought it for his first picture and he still continues to do that in movies today so i recommend it alex recommends it it's gory five out of five for me and yeah. i think that would be the same for him if we were to rate movies on a five out of five scale which we've never done before yeah so. and if you have a sensitive stomach don't watch it yeah it's fucking gross yeah it really is gory gaze gory gaze. so next week since we are going to be beginning our six weeks of is it six weeks just so i'm clear i don't want to be fucking nuts uh from here to christmas yeah so we have one two three four three i need to see the calendar okay five six okay we have six okay so yeah we have six weeks of holiday horror so next week for our first episode of holiday horror we are going to be covering Home for the Holiday. 1972 Sally Field. Yeah, with a baby Sally Field. Well, I don't even know if she was a baby. She was a baby. She looks precious. She has that baby chair of mm-hmm. face. She's I think cute. she was right off of um, The Flying Nun Yeah, at that point. But I think this is her only horror credit, unless you consider Sybil. And I think this is like um, a kind of forgotten, like made-for-TV thriller of sorts. Also, if you've seen the short... Um... Miss Doubtfire and horror ver- version. <laughs> oh, the Mrs. Doubtfire, uh, the the recut. That's hilarious. Trailer. And they showed yeah. me this little recut horror trailer of Miss Doubtfire. If it was a horror movie, and it yeah. is good. They have those floating <laughs> around on the internet. That's one for like Mary Poppins. They I have one for it. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, you did show me the Mary Poppins. Um. So yeah, this Home for the Holidays film. I've never seen it. Alex has never seen it. It's a Thanksgiving based film. We purposely did not talk about it at the beginning of the episode because we. I uh, wanted to save it for the end of it, uh, obviously. Obviously, sir. So, uh, segue yeah. to next week. If you guys have seen it, let us know what you think. If you haven't seen it, take this time to go check it out. I think it's available on YouTube. So, we look forward to talking about it next week, guys. We hope you enjoyed this episode about Cabin Fever. Let us know what you thought about it in the comments. Uh, feel free to drop us a line. We are reachable at thegorygaze at gmail.com. We are open to any suggestions and feedback, unless you are welcome to prime time. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> Leave him alone. Um, he I has mean, an opinion, too. Whatever. It just doesn't mean shit. <laughs> and also, yeah, follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Twitter at the Gory Gaze. Thanks again for listening. Keep it gory. Uh, keep it gory, guys. We love you. Keep it. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Right. Stop it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to go.